This is a very unique track for the for most of the riders. Uh, the starting line, as we'll we'll emphasize as we get going here, is more just coming off a of turn four. It's it's really a round track. There's no real big straightaways here, and uh, it leaves it leaves a lot um, of action and moves, and everybody's trying to find out the best place to be on the track. And it will evolve. And the riders here. That's why we've had seven different winners. Um, it's just you can't predict a winner. So it is round two of the series here tonight. We had a fantastic meeting in round one in Chester Hover. Let's remind ourselves of how that one went. So Leon Manson victorious in Chester Hover back in mid-June, but only one point in it in the standings between himself and Mikkel Mickelson after that meeting. But uh, Sam, a psychological edge may be for, for Madsen because Mickelson will feel he should have won that final, made the gate, but then went wide off that top end and Leon Manson came shooting through. Yeah, we did have a chat with Mickelson afterwards and he did kick himself saying, you know what? God, I left the door wide open for him, and, and you can't do that at this level whatsoever. These guys are fast; they know how to they know how to race. So you just can't give them an inch. Do you see it as a race between these two? Do we think anybody else can get involved in the the overall race for the title? Well, I'd like to think that. I mean, there's four guys that we've already kind of mentioned that we're missing at Chestakova. You know, they're not scored any points here. So right now, it's a two-man uh, race, obviously with Mickelson and Madsen both. You know, scoring within one point, 16 and 15. There's a lot of points to be uh, still to catch up. So at this stage, I would reserve the answer to that one. But you never know in speedway. So we're looking at the likes of Casper Verena, Dimitri Berger, who scored decent points in that first meeting. Can they back that up here? If they can get a really big total, and that's not easy here, they could catch up. Yeah, but we've known that you know we get big surprises on this track, don't we? So you know those guys will be focusing on the fact that they're in this position right now, and 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 the point scoring side of things. They don't want to let go of that. So they're going to go out there, and I'm sure they're going to do their best and, and try to see if they can come out on top tonight. And as we watch the images from uh, presentation time here, we have a wild card, of course, in Norik Bladorn, who's a, a fast-rising uh, German youngster, and I'm sure he'd be very, very keen to uh, have a good night tonight. Absolutely. Well, here are the top five heading into the uh, meeting after the first round in Chester Hover. Dimitri Berger was really consistent in that first meeting. Yeah, sitting on 10 points right now, so he won't, won't let that get away from him. Yeah, the Frenchman who was so good in the recent World Cup, Casper Verena, back in the series this season, put good points on the board on his home track in Chester Hover. I think he's got a lot more to give to this sport too, and uh, I'm sure he's going to want to score lots of points tonight. Simon Wozniak currently third in the standings, unfortunately, from his point of view, not here tonight because he actually got those points as the first reserve uh, when he did so well in Chester Hover. Uh, but here is the man, Mikkel Mickelson, the double champion. Can he be on top tonight? He'll want to make sure that he doesn't make the same mistake he did at Chester Hover because this guy right here doesn't 
doesn't need a big door wide open for him to come in through it. And here's the guy that will try and go through that big door if there's one offered to him, Leon Munson, but never won on this circuit. There you go. What a, what a, that's a good recipe right there to make sure you go out there and beat these guys. But it's tough here. You know, this is a tough this, this track. Here. Here, here is what we're looking at. Yeah, this track is um, 298 meters, smallest one on the circuit. And um, it's tricky because it's not really a big straightaway the way they ride it. Um, it tends to keep the big momentum going. claiming the German national anthem. Great to see the fans turning out as they do. We love coming here, and as we've said, we've been here seven times in the Speedway Euro Championship. They've had seven different winners every time, so no one really knows what to expect, and that's the great thing. And about the way the track evolves during the meeting, too, that can often play a big part, and we've seen people make big moves in finals around the outside. It's really hard to predict this one. It is. You know, we've been here, and it's been raining. We've been here when it's been sunny. It's not very often that uh, it's perfect, and I think this this evening is probably a perfect racetrack. If they can keep the moisture in the track, there's not much wind at all. It's just the sun setting now. Um, this should be um, really good for the track creator to keep this thing good. Yeah, and we saw the riders on the um, on, on the pre-meeting warm-up, they call it now, a couple of hours before. That's what they're f fighting for here, the Speedway Euro Championship uh, title. But yes, warm-up takes place a couple of hours before the meeting. Uh, gives them a chance to see track conditions pretty much as they are during the meeting. Anything you saw from the, the warm-up in terms of, of the way you ride this track? Well, I I, you know, I, I, I tried to focus on a, a few of the riders, especially the hot ones like Mickelson. He looked really, um, he looked really solid on the track. So, you know, if there's, if there's somebody that's focused to get that third title, it will be definitely him. Yeah, of course, we've got two riders trying to become champion for a third time and several trying to, to fight back. Let's talk about the guys who are, are back in, uh, who were injured in the, the first uh, the first round and didn't compete. Obviously, Giannis Kawadze, the winner here uh, last year. As you see, the uh, riders uh, um, looking at Antonio Limbach having a look at uh, the outside gate. And, uh, wow, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a very unusual form of preparation yeah. there. <laughs> he's, having, he's having a look just to make sure you can see what uh, where the lights are probably more than anything. You know, focus on the, when you get up to the start line for the first time you don't want to be not concentrating on what you're doing and and just seeing where the referee's tree of lights are the green light comes on and sometimes that could be a problem but the way the sun set now there's there's no there's going to be no obstructions whatsoever for that do you think Antonio might be off gate four in his first ride he is by the way <laughs> yeah, he, he is he but, yeah. but the interesting thing about this meeting is heat one actually brings together all four riders who missed the first round due to injury so you've got Giannis Kawazi who of course was running up overall last year and won this meeting here in, in Gustrov Dominic Kubera, who made the top five last year, he's also back in business, along with Gregor Zengotto, good to see him here tonight, and also Andreas Lager. So four guys with a real point to prove in the first race. Yeah, they want to make sure they get maximum points, and there's only going to be one winner in this heat one, and we're going to see that shortly. But um, all, you know, there's, there's, it has been known that there's a one, one starting grid that sometimes doesn't give these guys a good chance to perform out of the start and yet to see whether it's been gate two in the past, it's been gate one in the past. Um, the track looks pretty even. I didn't get a chance to go and study the start line like I normally do. We were busy doing some other stuff here with uh, the pre-show, but um, this track is one of the ones that, it, there's nobody that can master the starts all four starting positions. It's never been done before that since we've been following it. So it, it really takes a talented rider to be able to get out of the start. Sometimes it might be a rider that isn't one going so good, but there we go. Here's the one of them for tonight's meeting here in Gustrov. Dominic Cabrera rides at number one. Andreas Laaga at two. Number three is Yanis Kawadze. And at number four is Gregor Zengotta. All of those four riders missed the opening round due to injury. They're all back big time tonight. Jan Kovetli, exciting young Czech, rides at five. Anna know is four. Great Britain goes at number six. At number seven, the Frenchman, Dimitri Berger, so good in the recent World Cup. Antonio Limbach keen for a big night here in Gustrov at number eight. The former champion, the former Double champion Mikkel Mickelson goes at nine, and the former champion Anzais Lebedevs, he's been on the roster here before at number 10. Fast half minute goes at 11, the Czech star. It's Kasper Marina next in line at 12. Number 13 here, Patrick Dudek trying to reclaim ground after his first round disappointment. Leon Madsen goes at 14, the defending champion at 15. Plenty of interesting Kai Huckenbeck has gone well here in the past. And there's the wild card, Norik Madorn, riding at number 16. Reserves tonight, Lucas Bauman goes at number 17. And Ben Ernst rides at number 18.
each and every one of those riders know if they have an opportunity to to do all four of these, which some of them missed it, we've already highlighted that. Um, the winner gets a seed right into the world championship. The winner overall becomes a Grand Prix rider, the, the, the Speedway Euro champion. At the moment, Leon Madsen leads the standings there, as you can see, with 16 points. Of course, he is a Grand Prix rider at the moment. The likes of Mikkel Mickelson, also a Grand Prix rider, Patrick Dudek, people whose Grand Prix places are not secure at all for next season. Nor is Leon Madsen's, by the way. If you can win this series, in part of it's in mid-September, then that really makes things a lot easier for next year. You know what you're doing. Yeah, it's such, it's such a, you know, it's such an important event when you look at it from that side of things. This is kind of an insurance for some of these guys to get out there and perform well. So we have the riders about to make their way onto the circuit here at Gustrov for the opening race of the second round of the Tauron Speedway Euro Championship. And as we've mentioned, four guys who were not involved due to injury in Chester Hover. The two-minute warning is on from our referee, Pavel Slotsky, and they make their way onto this uh, well-prepared Gustrov circuit in front of a uh, big crowd, lots of excitement. Dominic Kibera, who spent time out of the sport after his uh, big crash in practice for the Warsaw Grand Prix back in May, but was part of the victorious Polish side in the World Cup last weekend. Had a big ride towards the end of that meeting as well to, to say, uh, clinched it dramatically over uh, Great Britain and Denmark in the closing stages. And Dominic Kibera now trying to make ground. And of course, he made the top five in the Speedway Euro Championship last year, even though he missed the first round. So he could do it again. Yeah, that's, that just goes to show, you know, you just got you got to focus on one thing, and that's when you're on the track. Make sure you get as many points as you possibly can to. Um, and now he's back in it again, and like you say, he's in good form. He missed a bit of the early part because of that um, crash he had. But, man, what a star he was for the for the Polish team, as you've mentioned, Dave. And uh, he's got to be riding on a cloud right now, knowing that uh, he's got a chance. And being on the very inside of the first race here in Gustro has got to give him some confidence that he can get that first corner first. Well, there is Dominic Kibera off that inside gate. Uh, next to him in gate two will be Andreas Laaga, who we heard from in the pre-show. Janusz Kowadze, the man who was superb here last year and uh, won the meeting, of course, took it all the way with Leon Manson in the series as a whole. And Dregel Zegota goes off the outside gate. So Kibera off the inside, Laaga gate two, Kowadze gate three, and Zegusta off the outside. We have seen meetings here before somewhere. Gates one and four have been where to be. Middle can, can, you can get to really miss out. You can do it. And, and we've seen uh, Leon Madsen come out of uh, gate three many times thinking you can't get out of it but he's one of the riders that can actually do it and if he's if this success tonight or here you got to get be able to get out of all of them here we go with the opening race then in Gustros Speedway Euro Championship round two and they got to make a great start from the outside gate in yellow so got to with the advantage going with it is Kowalski in white in the second place over Dominic Kibera with Lyaga at the back but so got to has the lead here he's being chased hard by Kowalski they're breaking away if they start the second lap and now will Kowalski try the inside run a great start the outside. Now they've been the inside here. Yeah, you can see right now, Gawazi's trying to tip them off of the inside line if he possibly can to. Zengata, if he stays where he's at, it'd be very difficult. Now we see Kawazi go to the high line. He's going to go up and touch the track in the middle of the track. He's going to drive up the inside now. Very tight. You can see what I mean about the circle of this racetrack. They run into each other down the straightaway. Zengata was so narrow on the back straight Whoa. there. Gawazi almost is the back of Zengata there. Off Ben Forley will to stop on. It's still Gregor Zengata, but now we'll over the outside move on the final lap. He's got more pace here as he goes into them three and four for the final time. So got to move down to block him. Round the outside goes Yellows Kawanze. Great start for oh, the team. Right. Super stuff by Yellows Kawanze. He was trying inside, inside, inside all right. Then he went for the outside and then he burst around the outside off turn three and four to get the better of Dregels and got a super start into the meeting in Gustav. Great action and Yellows Kawanze is back. Yeah, he's back in it for sure. Left off right where he was here last year winning and uh, man he had to work hard in this heat one straight away we're producing some good races uh, you know when you when you got a track that can just give you that little bit of an edge um, and he goes out there and pulls it off confirmation that Janos Kowalczyk was the winner of an excellent opening race here second place to the fast starting Gregor's and got a Dominic Kibera in third place wow very 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 good uh, first race for us for sure Start by Zengotter off the outside here, absolutely electric. Yeah, we're just saying that's exactly what Antonio was looking at. That is what he's going to be expecting when he gets into that uh, next race coming up here. But that right there, Zengotter makes a splendid start. You can just see right there from the white from uh, Yanis Kowazi with the 3-3-3 on his back. 
resorted right to the inside. And I tell you, he was working that inside, but you can see the speed he was having, trying to, to figure out what he's going to do here. But then that little bit of dirt on the outside started appearing, and he moved off a little bit, but he had a big lift coming off of turns four at one time, and the bike got him out of shape a little bit. But then at that point, he put the bike down on the inside, then moved up to the outside and gained that little bit of ground. And that's exactly here. We can see him just lifting right there, just getting out of shape that little bit. But then he resorted to the outside and pulled it off all the way around. He's got to be happy about that one. Did so well to recover from that and still make it uh, round and get the victory. So a great start to the meeting. Janos Kowadze wins the opening race. Heat number two is next up. Adam Eris there in white, uh, the Great Britain man who won his first ride in Chester Hover in round one. He's just looking for the uh, situation of the, uh, the green light. Line up for heat two across the... Starting gate will feature uh, Jan Kuvek off the inside gate. It's Dimitri Berger off uh, gate two. Five second places in the regular races in Chester Hover. Adam Ellis there will be in white off gate three. And Antonio Limbach, who had a really tough time in the opening round, but can he make use here of the outside gate in race number two? Correct, Berger, Ellis and Limbach for heat two. Yeah, this will, be, this will be an interesting one here. I think all four of these guys are really at the right level together. Whether Lindback can actually pull off, looks like so far that outside gate could be the one, but there's only been one race so far. But if that one is to pull off, and uh, let's see what's going to happen out of this one. Yep, let's see what happens in heat two with uh, Quebec on the inside. Berger gate two, Ellis gate three, and Limbach off the outside. Mike Trail three light is on and away they go. And Ellis makes a good start there from gate three. And can he get there in front? He tries to move his outside and he does. Ellis has the advantage, turning back to Limbach in yellow. They'll race on the back straight for the first time. And Adam Ellis here gets the lead from gate three. Really good gate from him. He leads from uh, Limbach with Berger in third place. Limbach will try the inside move there on lap two, but closed off there by the Great Britain man. And just now in the first round in Chester Hover, Adam Eric leads his first ride. Wow, excellent move from Ellis to get himself. Get out of that start, boy. And he gets up there and he's controlling the track right in mid-track. That's where the dirt is right now. And he's got his bike pretty well set up for that. He's got a little bit of training these guys had an hour before this meeting started. He's able to get out there and get the feel of the bike. And it's working perfect for the GB boy. Yeah, it looks like Adam Eric is in control with this heat too. We saw in the first race that Yannis Kawanze switched to the outside on the final up and that did the shot for him but uh, Adam Ellis has pulled well clear here of Antonio Lindbach and it'll be a great start to the meeting for the Great Britain man Adam Ellis a clear winner of a two second Antonio Lindbach third Dimitri Berger and uh, Jan Kovac there at the back Adam Ellis off to a winning start here in a Gustrov super start from gate three uh, outgated Lindbach who of course was off the outside just moved him aside on those first two turns and that got the job done and then gradually as the, the race went on he managed to pull himself clear and away and get those big three points from his opening ride. So confirmation of the result then of heat number two, a win for Adam Ellis, second for Antonio Limbach, third place, Dimitri Berger. Yeah, when they were revved up for this uh, heat number two, when that tape uh, went up straight away, Ellis made a good jump right there. Looked like Lindback was focused on getting over the top of him, but Ellis was already there, took up the, the real estate on the track, moved off to the off of turn two, just to mid-track. And from that point on, he had that bike hooked up and it pulled him all around. Here's another view of these guys from the back side of it, good into the first corner. Ellis puts his front wheel right over the white line. You can see the smoke come up from the, the little white dust down there and then just moved up a little bit. And uh, that bike had plenty of speed for him to do it. There's the start right there. Ellis is just working that bike to get over the, uh, the ins two inside guys. Uh, pretty much controlled the race from that point. He'll be very encouraged by the speed he had to pull clear as that race went on. That's uh, perfect as far as uh, Adam Ellis is concerned in his first ride. We move on to race three. We look at uh, Adam there in the uh, pits. Had a fairly radical haircut in the last week or so, but uh, certainly <laughs> going fast there in heat two. Heat three is uh, trackside, and we will see Anze Lebedev there. We see Mikkel Mikkelsen in white. Lebedev will go off the inside gate. Yellow is Kasper Verena off the outside, and there's Vastav Milik in blue. So Lebedev, Milik, Mikkelsen, and Verena is your lineup for heat number three. Yeah, it's really hard to place a, a winner in this heat number three, but you got to say that uh, Mickelson's got to be the favorite. He's the one chasing the points right now to stay on the top. Goes into the meeting one point behind Leon Madsen, who scored 16 in the first round. Mickelson scored 15. has been rather in and out in his league racing, Mikkel Mickelson, including last night uh, in the extra league up. So let's see what happens in this race number three. Lebedev, Milik, Mickelson, and Marina at the start line, and away they go. Mickelson made a good one there. 
White getting tight there into the first bend with Verena, but moves him aside on the first two turns. Let me just find a turn back in red. Then tight on the back straight for the first time. And Nicol Nicholson has the advantage here with Casper Verena in second place. And Verena lifts off bend four. And in third place is Lebedev with Minnick trying to catch him off. And Minnick will try and turn back to the inside there and move through into third place. They're backing away, but Nicol Nicholson well out in front here. Yeah, Nicholson, uh, he did it all out of the start in this uh, heat number three to get himself out in front right there. Leaving the boys behind, he's going real fast. So he's got a good setup. away from Kasper Verena. Lebedev's in third place was uh, just beginning to gain some ground there on Verena, but then lost out upon turns three and four. And Nicholson is pouring away here with this heat three. He's got both in the left and the back straight ahead of Verena as he goes into bench three and four there. Riding pretty wide now already in this heat three. And Mikkel Mikkelsen takes a clear victory there over Kasper Verena with Anzos Lebedev's in a third place and Vaslav Minik out the back. That was quite a statement there from Mikkel Mikkelsen. A dominant victory in that one. Decent start from gate three, which does appear to be pretty good from the start line early on here so far tonight. And then the move on the first bend just took care of Kasper Verena, and that was the way it went. Mickelson with the win in heat three, second place Verena, third Lebedevs and Vasav Menik at the back. Yeah, so so far it looks like the, the outside two gates are the ones performing, or is it just the rider that's going well right now? Because that's Mikkel Mickelson did not hesitate once once at all really out of that start straight to the outside line his mission was just get the bike go so obviously he's had a good setup to ride this track really wide and we mentioned that earlier that this track can produce two big racing lines one on the very inside and one on the outside and Mickelson dove straight into that first corner and steered the bike right to the outside and then continued on as the boys were rustling for the minor points right there Millie gets in there Lebedev finally just gets over the top of him to capture that one point vital one point and Fiona was looking, just following uh, in second place all the way around for the four laps. He would, would have loved to made that outside gate work for him. So Mickelson puts three points on the board from his first ride in heat three, and you can see what it means to him as well there. He's delighted with that. And uh, we will see now whether Leon Madsen can follow suit in heat four when he'll be going off gate two. It'll be Kai Huckenbeck, Leon Madsen, Norik Bladorn, and Patrick Dudek in line up for heat four. So a pretty strong lineup here, including two riders. The home crowd will be keen to see do well. Kai Huckenbeck has done well here in the past. Norik Bladorn, the wild card, the German fans have really turned up the volume here for this one yeah. with uh, Dudek on the outside, Leon Madsen gate two. Yeah, Dudek's a pretty special rider too from that outside I think he might have something to say but uh, the fans would definitely be rooting on their two German riders on the one on the inside one out of gate three yeah hooking back on the inside in red Madsen in blue off gate two but all white off gate three and Dudek in yellow off the outside and uh, Madsen will be aware that uh, Mikkel Mickelson has scored three points in his first ride to move on to 18 in the series just waiting here on Norwich Bladorn in gate three with the uh, start marshal Quite sure what's going on down there. Some kind of communication. We're down to zero on the clock, and uh, something must be obstructing on the on the tree of lights. And yeah. uh, they noticed it, and uh, they made sure somebody got out of the way. Yep, I think that's been sorted out now. So we have them in line for eight four. Hooking back, Madsen, Bladorn, and Dudek. Away they go, fairly even start. The good start by the rider in yellow, Patrick Dudek, comes charging across. He's got the advantage. Hooking back. Place for Dawn in third and Leon Madsen here at the back in the early stages. This could be drama in heat four. Dudek is charging clear, but Dawn doing well in second place there against Hooking back. And what can Leon Madsen do now? Try and make his way through. But the Dawn goes wide off the uh, second bet. Hooking back is there, has to turn back once more. And again, no way through. Oh, strong move there on the top oh, turn. Oh, look at that. <laughs> they are really battling for it. Hooking back just says it's my track. I'm going to come up the inside there. Dudek's out and he's gone. The battle right now is who's going to finish up in second place right now. And Hooking back holding on to it. He's got a bunch up behind. Madsen's going really high now, trying to figure out is there any extra grip out that outside to catch up to these guys. Well, Leon Munson couldn't find his way through there, despite the two Germans exchanging places two or three times there. Hooking back up the door. We're really going through it. But Leon Munson out the back. He can't get anywhere into this one. Patrick Dudek is uh, well clear out in front. And the drama in heat four is Dudek wins it. Second place is Kai Hookenbeck, third Norrit Bedorn, and the champion runs a very rare last place, Leon Madsen in E4, and last places can be very damaging indeed in the series, and certainly as far as tonight's meeting is concerned as well. So that's a big one in E4. 
Dudek with a super start from the outside gate. That was tremendous from Patrick Dudek. And then a furious battle between the two Germans. Huckenbeck, the winner of Heat 4. Uh, but Dudek, sorry, the winner of Heat 4. Huckenbeck in second place. Bladorn was third. Madsen scoring no points. What a shock now in Heat 4. Yeah, Gustro, 298-meter track is throwing up another surprise right there. you got to be in the first corner chasing the perfect line. And Dudek did it from the outside gate straight in there. Right along inside of him was was Kai Huckenback, which was holding on to that second place for almost a lap right there, but then it mixed up again there. You can see right here that Nor Lador was trying to get up the inside, and that's what they do. They put their front wheel right over the inside line, and these guys bunch up so tight from looking from our illusion here. It looks like they're going to crash sometimes, but they didn't mix up, and they just swap in places a bit. That was a pretty oh, awesome race. Really. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. So the, this is there, but Patrick Dudek made no mistakes for the outside gate. Obviously, the outside gates right now are performing the best, and Leon Masson had no answer in this heat four man. What was he going to do? He didn't get out of gate two at all. He's going to be going there scratching his head, but this fellow right here is really happy that he had the he had one of the best gates early on. Yeah, D Dudek needs a big result here tonight. There's no doubt about that, and that will give a real real confidence boost. Yeah, and he was fast on the track too. So you know these guys when they reach for that dirt line and it offers a doom, you know. It's one of those things when the bike's performing good and you're feeling good, you just got to get there first. So let's confirm the uh, first four winners here tonight of the meeting. Three points on the board in the early stages for uh, Mikkel Mikkelsen, Adam Ellis, Janusz Kowadze and Patrick Dudek. We've raced seven times in Gustrov and we have had seven different winners. It really is a meeting where you can't predict the outcome. In 2014, Nicky Pedersen won the opening round of the series. He beat Peter Kilderman in the final with Janusz Kowadze third. There was heavy rain in 2016, which meant the final couldn't take place. And Martin Vashlik was declared the winner after he'd scored 12 points in the qualifying races, one point ahead of Christoph Kasperdak. The following year, it was round two, and Artem Laguta took his only sec victory as he held off Andres Lebedev in the final, whilst 2018 was a breakthrough for Great Britain's Robert Lambert. Only his second meeting in the sec, and he took a thrilling win as he got the better of Leon Madsen with a spectacular move off the second bend. Madsen was second again in 2019. This time it was Grigory Laguta who took the victory, whilst Bartosz Mektawa marked his debut in the sec with third place. We were back here in 2021 when Poland's Piotr Pawlitski took his first win in the sec, and once again it was Madsen in second place with Patrick Dudek third. And our seventh winner in seven meetings at Gustrov was last year. Kowadze coming out on top in a terrific battle. Dudek and Dan Bewley completed the top three, with Madsen missing out in fourth. Kowadze is the only previous Gustrov winner here tonight, so can he do it back to back? Or will we have our eighth different winner on this circuit? So many different winners in Gistrop, uh, seven winners. Uh, Adam Ellis, it, your first opening heat, you become the winner, but it's far, so far different than the track you used to race every single week, which is older than for Chevy Tigers, right? Yes. It's very different. <laughs> the microphone helps. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very different, but uh, I haven't been very good in, in Sheffield this year and been better in, in Apollo, which is similar to this track. So. Yeah, there's a lot of similarities to it, and uh, I feel pretty good. Yeah, Apollo was a track where Zoltan Haider was racing a Hungarian rider, and it's the most British track among the Polish tracks, right? Yeah, I reckon so. The smallest, probably, and uh, yeah, it's it's a nice track. I like it. But you've got the Polish crew with uh, former rider here, yeah? Yeah, we've, we've got got the Polish boys over, um, still trying to understand what they're saying when they talk between them, but... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going, you know, good start to the meeting. Hopefully, hopefully we can keep it going. Is it crucial to have uh, proper knowledgeable spanner man for this kind of, this sort of competition? Yeah. Definitely? <laughs> yeah, he is, yeah. And you've got them? I hope so. At gate number four in your second race, uh, how much this track changes for, from your perspective right now? Uh, I think gate four is normally good here. It's, it's a different track, like gate four is closer to the first corner than what gate one is, so... Um, I've got two gate fours tonight. Hopefully, that can get a couple more wins from them, them and uh, try and pick up some points from gate one and two. But yeah, it's uh, it's different to normal track. It's hard to get the bike going straight here. It always wants to turn. So um, it's, I think setup is going to be important. Um, you know, and hopefully we can keep on top of it. And the last word, Dominic Kubera and Matijinovski, you've both beat them at the Speed World Cup. Is that the big booster for you? Uh, it is, but we didn't beat them in, in the final standing, so uh, I would have preferred to have lost to them, but we, we won the gold medal. But, 
Uh, yeah, of course it is, you know, and a few days before that, uh, there was uh, the meeting for Andre Kudryashov and there were some good riders there as well. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, I feel feel pretty good at the moment. I just need to, to make sure I ride better. Lovely. Thanks very much, Adam. Thank you. Good to welcome uh, Thomas Lorick with us here this evening, asking the questions and also best wishes to Andre Kudryashov, certainly very much in our thoughts and uh, did well in the Speedway Euro Championship several years ago. So there's uh, some stats from the early stages and uh, Mikkel Mickelson with a uh, very fast reaction time in his first ride. And you could see in Mickelson's opening ride, he was hooked up, he was away and, and, and clear and gone. Yeah, there's a big difference. If you're looking at the, the, the second number after the, the stop there, you know, these guys... They're all trying to make the best start, and it's it, it, and, and and sometimes that's everything. And other times the track will lend some good racing. Today it looks like it's pretty critical to get out of the start. And we saw in the uh, in the video just before that the, the the footage of the seven different winners here, and the fact that they don't include Madsen or Mickelson. And we've seen Mickelson off to a good start here tonight. We've seen Madsen off to a, a really uncharacteristic start. We sometimes do see him change things or whatever as the meeting goes on there's the gate success bearing in mind that Kawadzo came from the back in, in the opening race but Madsen did look quite off it there in that first ride so it'll be interesting we've seen him have a zero before and come back and, and score big points afterwards but when you look at the draw that he's got in this event he's got gate two which is the first one where he scored zero this next one's going to be out of the red then he goes to the outside then he goes out of three then he ends up on gate two in his final race and whether that's psychologically going to hurt him yet to see he's got to be able to score this points if he's not making starts he's going to have to get his bike hooked up and he's already now two points behind Mikkel Mickelson in the series and all these uh, races matter because all the points there's the standings on tonight with Mickelson Dudek Ellis and Kawadze early winners here with three points on the board remember top two go straight to the final on the night next four into the race off the extra heat marina hulkenbeck limbach and zengotta but all those points add up in the series apart from the last chance race and uh, so that so the fact that in that first block of races nicholson took three and madsen took zero that immediately turns around the overall standings and then in the very next race mickelson's coming off of gate four mm -hmm which is um, in his standards would probably be pretty pretty useful but he's got Patrick Dudek on the very inside coming out of gate one which you've yet to have a winner from so you know this is uh, this is challenging times for these guys they got to think real hard so every point counts so the best thing to do right now is if you can't win it from a gate position make sure you place as good best you can and just keep tallying those points up here's Jankovic making his way back to the pits for some uh, adjustments we saw Dudek impressive uh, in his first ride scoring uh, three points Dominic Kibera needs to put more on the board. He got one in his first outing. Jan Kvek, who's uh, having just had some adjustments made and making his way back now to the start line, failed to score in his first ride, did uh, Jan Kvek. And Mikkel Mikkelsen, of course, a winner. So two of our opening winners clash here in Heat 5, Patrick Dudek and Mikkel Mikkelsen. And Dudek, when you look down the, the record books, has done well on this track in the past, been on the podium twice, and seems generally to, to have the key to it. Yeah, he's uh, he's, a, he's an out-and-out racer, you know, and he's, um, he's, he's pretty light on the bike. Um, he, and, and he gets that thing going forward. I mean, it'll be a tough, tough challenge for him to come from that very inside gate. And Jan Kvek, we did just mention him a little bit. He's been coming on the scene, and he has his highlights, doesn't he, uh, Dave? And, oh, know, yeah. I think his, star, his, his starts are pretty good. We do know that this track can be uh, against you out of the gate, but coming from gate three, he's got to be thinking he's got half a chance. Dudek on the inside, Kibera on gate two, Quebec on gate three, and Mickelson off the outside for this heat. Five second block of races here in uh, Gustrov. And uh, look, if you're looking for a total to make the top six, you normally around the, the 10 point mark is where you want to or, or need to be. This is the kind of track where we do see points being dropped on regular occasions. Dudek, Kibera, Quebec, and Mickelson out the line for five to go away. And it's a very tight first bend with Patrick Dudek trying to barge him aside. Nicholson coming across in the other field. But Dudek here is just on the advantage. Nicholson trying to go round him. He does. He's the third bend. Nicholson Nickel with the lead over Patrick Dudek who tries to barge his way back through. Neck and neck still up to lap two between Dudek and Red. And Nicholson in yellow. Patrick Dudek with the inside. Round the outside goes Nicholson. Uh, you know that Dudek would love to have been able to reach to put that back wheel into the dirt to give him some drive. Mickelson was already there. He came from the outside gate, but I tell you, Dudek did a really good job of getting that second position. 
as it looks right now because he could have been the graveyard start, but he's settling for second because Mickelson's got the back wheel right where he wants it. There's a long way to go, but Mikkel Mickelson looks to be a man on a mission here this evening. He is dominating. He finds off that good scrap with Patrick Dudek. Guevara in third place with Quebec in the back, but once Mickelson got in front, he absolutely checked out once again, and Mikkel Mickelson makes it two rides and two wins in Gustav. Second is Dudek, post for third with Quebera holding on against Jan Quebec. Mikkel Mickelson has certainly rocked up tonight with the intention of scoring big points in the Speedway Euro Championship, and that was a really determined ride, neck and neck with Patrick Dudek for a couple of laps before he established himself out in front, and when he did, he was away and he was gone. Mikkel Mickelson, the winner of Heat 5. Terrific ride by him. Strong battle with Dudek and Mickelson coming out on top. The two-time champion puts three more points onto his account. Dudek in second place. Kubera in third. No points for Jan Kubek, but Mickelson looking very good here tonight. Yeah, if you're saying that outside gate's a favourite, there's been this will be the second win from that. Gate 3 has had three wins after this race, but it was all about, I would say, that we just seen uh, Patrick Dudek get in there off gate 1. And he just put the ins the front wheel on that inside, kept it going, knowing that he wanted to reach out. He needed to reach out to be able to get that back wheel in a little bit more softer dirt so that thing would pull away. But Nicholson had to cover himself by keeping the dew deck down low as much as he could do. But then he decided time to let the bike go, and the bike started working. He put it out in the dirt, and the bike started pulling, and then he just resorted, hey, you know what? There's plenty of cushion out here. I'm going to chase it. And as soon as he decided to do that, that bike pulled away. So he's in really good form, and the bike's working great. That looked like a rider completely in tune with what his equipment was doing, knowing what the equipment was doing, and as you say, he was pulling it. He was going forward, going uh, forward he, all the way. He needed to slow down Dudek. And the way to do that was to clamp him down as much as he possibly could do and to give him a chance to be able to have a little bit of breathing room. And as soon as he got that breathing room, he took off. Mikkel Mickelson on the score chart with maximum points so far tonight and onto 21 in the series as a whole. Let's see what Leon Manson can do to respond in heat six because Manson will go off the inside gate. Off the outside gate there is Adam Ellis, who we heard from in the uh, recent track grading break. A win for him first time out. Leon Manson, don't forget, failed to score first time. He goes off the inside gate in red this time around. It's uh, Andres Lebedevs who goes in blue, scored a point in his first ride, and Andreas Leaga goes in white. Yeah, Ellis has got to be feeling uh, pretty handy from that um, outside gate. It's the better place to be. Leon Matson might get some encouragement seeing that Dudek made a decent one there without scoring a point so far. He needs a point. Matson on the inside. Big race for him in the red helmet cover. They go away and he makes a half decent start. But look at Adam Rose again charging across from the outside gate. And Adam Rose race leads here over Leon Matson with Anthony Lebedev in blue in third place. The outside is certainly going well. Adam Rose is certainly going well. And now we're going to see if he can hold Leon Matson at bay. There is from Matson with Lebedev in third place and Lyaga out the back. There is goes out. Why picking up drive now will the inside work for Madsen the speed around the outside and an Irish house in front again here yeah, it's one of those things, the way this track is, you got to go so deep, otherwise they'll chase you up on that inside the shortest way around. Looks like Ellis is going mid-track. That could give Leon Matson a little bit of hope that he can get up that inside. He's just going to keep plugging away there. Ellis needs to go deeper, but he's got so many Lebedevs right on the outside of all both those guys. Well, Madsen could find himself mugged here by Lebedevs. He's not too careful. He's been plugging away on the inside, trying to pass out. I'll tell you what, Andres Lebedevs has gone round Leon Madsen. He's going to be on the outside here. That's where he was. And Adam Ellis with the advantage. He leads up the final bend over. Lebedev's superb racing in Gustrov. Adam Ellis and Andres Lebedev and Leon Manson got completely mugged there. He was battling for the lead and then he wasn't aware, I don't think, or too aware of the threat of Lebedev's around the outside. And that leaves the defending champion with one point from his first two rides. And Adam Ellis with six out of six. Wow. I like the way you say he got mugged. He got beat up, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Really? And I tell you, that was great stuff from Lebedev's there. He wasn't going to give up one. Whatsoever. He came from gate two and uh, worked his way into that position. Man, ex excellent move. Tremendous heat six, and Adam Ellis makes it two rides and two wins. He gets the three points. Lebedev's in second place. Madsen in third. Lyoga out the back. Wow. Uh, that just goes to show the lines are there at this Goose Road track right here. 
You want to think that Leon Massey was going to make something out of the inside gate. That bike is probably a little bit too powerful. Might have spun up a little bit for him, but Adam Ellis already coming off of a race win, coming out of gate three in his first one. Now he's in the yellow helmet color right there, come off gate four. The bike was perfect for him, but he did get under pressure a little bit because we've seen Leon Matson was putting the pressure, and Leon Matson was thinking, do I go to the dirt or do I stay down low? And that just opened the door there on that outside, I should say, that Andreas Levin was able to come in and squeeze between them and clamp it back down to that inside right there. Almost came under <laughs> under uh, Ellis there, but uh, close finish. Great finish, and uh, just about the outside was the, the place to be. Here, look how close it is. Yeah, that is definitely close. <laughs> yeah. Lebed, as, as always, the entertainer, but uh, Adam Ellis, the winner, and Leon Munson left in third place. What a meeting so far. We move on to H7 here in uh, Kostrov, and this will feature another of our opening winners, Janusz Kowadze off the outside gate. There's there's Vasraf Milik off the inside. He'll be in red. Kai Huckenbach going in blue. Dimitri Berger will be in white. And Janusz Kowadze will be in yellow off the outside gate. He'll fancy his chances here of joining Ellis and Mickelson on six points apiece. Yeah, you got to let the, the formula that you, the grid positions um, become apparent whenever you draw where you're at in the in the overall program, uh, the way the spreadsheets work on it. And if you get the outside lines, like Kwadzi's sitting there right there, it's going to be handy for him to come out of that one. Medic off the inside, hook him back, gate two, Berger, gate three, and Kwadzi off the outside. Plenty of drama here in Ghost Trap already. Eight, seven, at the start line, they go away, and what can Kwadzi do off the outside gate? And he makes it into the first bend in front. Yanis Kwadzi clearly in front of the other three, who were successful on that first turn. Minnick in second place being passed by Hulkenbeck around the outside. Hulkenbeck goes into second place in blue. Minnick in third over. Berger. Berger will try the inside. But Kawadze racing clear here in yellow from the outside gate being chased half by Kai Hulkenbeck. Passes off the third place, but Kawadze leads in seven. Yeah, you just can't see anybody that's got any, uh, any good setups going to lose it from that outside gate so far. And then and Kawadze hasn't let it himself down. He was out there thinking this is good. But look at Hulkenbeck right that outside line big time. He's gaining some speed right now. So kawadze has got to watch what's going on now. Well, I wonder if Kawadze is too defensive here. He doesn't quite know where Hulkenbeck is. Hulkenbeck is picking up enormous speed here as the race continues. And again, Kawadze is defensive in mid-track. And Kai Hulkenbeck was just locked out there. Now we'll go for the inside on the final bend. Neck and neck into that turn. Hulkenbeck going on the inside. Kawadze back around the outside. Good action. And it's a win for Janusz Kawadze. Second place, Kai Hulkenbeck, who gave it everything there. Vastar Medic in third over Dimitri Berger. There's certainly more than one way to get round the Gustrov circuit, and Janusz Kowadze eventually found the way to get round in there and hold off the challenge of Kai Hukenbeck, who was going wider than we've seen any rider really so far tonight. It didn't quite pay off, but he almost made it through on the inside when he cut back on the final lap. But it's a win for Janusz Kowadze, who also goes on to six points from two rides. Second for Hukenbeck, that's his second, second place, and Vasov Menek in third spot. You know, any advice I can give a rider from my experience on this uh, this Goose Road track is, man, there's only two lines, right on the inside and right on the outside. How Kawazi held on to that towards the end there, uh, that's all down to uh, probably just his technique on the track. But when the tapes went up, Milik from the inside did score in this race. He got boxed in straight away. But on the outside, Kawadze made a perfect start. And then the battle started to begin. And Kai Hukenbeck was building some momentum. He was trying the mid-track, trying the outside. And then he looked over his left-hand shoulder and says, OK, got you guys handled. I'm going to concentrate on my own race right now. We can see him action of him getting himself into that second position in the blue helmet color. That's Kai Heckenbach, and the crowd was going nuts right there as the German got himself into position. Then he started picking the right lines. Kowadze, I'm not so sure, know where to go. He stuck in the mid-track and almost gave the, the Huckenback a chance to get around him, but Kowadze pulled off a good start and a good win. Yep, the winner of this meeting last year, Yaris Kowadze, and he has six points here from his first two rides tonight. Moving on to Heat 8, and we have uh, three riders who scored two points in their opening ride. So Gregor Zengotta, Antonio Limbach, and Kath Bavarina, and also... Norik Bladorn, the wild card, goes in yellow, and he was very competitive first time out when he was battling with Kai Hukenbeck. So an interesting one to call again here, but uh, three riders so far unbeaten with six out of six so far. And let's see what uh, these guys currently on two points. If someone can win here, of course, move on to five from these two pointers uh, with uh, Gotter inside, Limbach gate two, Verena gate three, and Bladorn off the outside. 
Sam Marshall gets them into the line. Last man into the line there is Antonio Limbach in the blue helmet colour. And here we go with Heat 8 to complete the second block of races in Kirstrove. Decent start there from Bladorn in yellow. Bladorn gets the first bend in front. He gets above Antonio Limbach around the outside. It's Michael Kasper Farina. Limbach covers it very brutally on the back straight. There's no way through for Kasper Farina. From there as Limbach maintains second. But well, there might be a way through for Farina. Because he's come from nowhere around the outside. And now he's coming across by Bladorn. He'll try and turn back here. That's stunning by Kasper Farina. That's absolutely brilliant by Farina. How has he done that? He's ridden inside, outside. And he's somehow got to the front. I tell you what, Limbach did him a favour. Farina was being pushed, pushed, pushed by Limbach when he was trying to get around to get in second place and just got a tremendous drive to go all the way around the door as well. Excellent race from the pole. And now Antonio Limbach trying to put pressure on Norrin Bledorn up on the top turn. Marina riding the, the air fence, riding the Ricardson line up on turn three and four. It's just about working for him. He's going clear, but they're having to go so wide here. It's Captain Marina who leads us there. Frantic strap going on for, for second place. I think Limbach has just about got that second place now over Norrin Bledorn. But a spectacular win by Marina in race number eight. That is absolutely sensational stuff there here in the Custro. Third to first, really raining it round the boards and then turning back on Bladorn. That is some ride by Casper Marina, who is pretty good for the spectacular when he's hooked up well and he was there. He's moved on to five points from two rides with a fantastic win and a great battle with Limbach and Bladorn. There's a, great racing. I was going to say, there's an example right there of uh, Gate 3 going to get the credit as somebody winning off of it, but he didn't win the start, did he? He had to work hard. He certainly did. Verena the winner, Limbach in second place, Bladorn in third, and uh, Zagotta out the back. Great stuff there in Heat 8, and here's how we did it. Amazing here. Look at that. Norik Bladorn makes a superb start from that outside, gets in, thinks he's got a cover because he's keeping it down low. And Casper Verona shuts on the coming out of gate three, goes up, gets pushed out really, really wide right there. But that throws him back wheel right into the real thick stuff. And that just gives him that little bit of extra drive right there. Lindback trying to protect that second place, thinking he should have been a little bit deeper. And right there is where the thick stuff is. And uh, Verona makes a great, great corner there. And then he has so much speed, comes underneath uh, Norik Lador, gets, gets in there. Norik didn't know what was going on at that stage, right? Yeah, so that was an excellent race from him. Used the whole track and uh, made that thing work. I think it's to go from there, where he's just gone around the outside, to then cut back so tight. That's yeah. really intelligent racing move. Yeah, he just pretty, pretty much, he got pushed into those positions <laughs> yeah. and he had to get back to the inside because he had so much speed to slow the bike down a bit. And it was perfect, wasn't it? Perfect. It, was, but it was great racing and, and great job by Casper Verena in Heat 8. And uh, there's the, uh, the debrief going on in the pit. Super stuff there by Verena. Moving on to five points from his opening two rides here in uh, Gustroff. We've got a couple of rides on five points, so Verena and uh, Dudek. And we also have the leading three, Mickelson, Ellis and Kowadze. So great stuff here, two rides apiece completed. We've seen some thrilling finals here in Gustroff. Let's take a look back at 2017. 2017 final featured Artem Laguta, Vaslav Milik, Christoph Kasprazak, and Andrzej Lebedev. This, of course, was Lebedev's title year. He's the rider in yellow, making it around the outside. And look out for Artem Laguta in red. And we can perhaps have a look at how the track has developed here over the years. Yeah, you can see these guys are really reaching around, just like there are examples today going on here. Just never solid there. You can let the bike go, but Laguta did a great job just to keep that thing moving forward right there and just took care of this uh, final race. Race right there where Lebedev's really enjoyed it because he was the winner of it and he never even won one of the rounds but coming in second place in this one put him on top overall yeah he was really consistent this year and says Lebedev's was on the roster every time as you say didn't uh, didn't quite win a round but did enough to, to win overall in a competitive series of uh, Vaslav Medic at the back here in this race was also really involved that year, remember Christoph Kasprazak winning at uh, Lublin as well. But uh, Artem Laguta, of course, went on to become a, a world champion and, and thankfully is back in racing competitively this year as well. This was his uh, one Speedway Euro Championship meeting victory. It came in Gustrov. Yeah, what a place to have it too, man. This is in the crowd and, the, and the, the team, man. They were so ecstatic about the fact that he went out there and uh, won this one. He was ecstatic. Yeah, great stuff there. Artem Laguta, the winner here in Gustrov in 2017. Lebedev and Laguta just having a, a chat afterwards so uh, great stuff there that was memories from 2017 we'll see more of that uh, later on in the meantime uh, let's head down to the pits for some interviews with with thomas
Thanks, David. Thanks, Sam. Uh, right now, we've got the year area, Kai Hugen back. He was racing fabulous. You've been on the roster position in 2016, but you've tried so many racing lines to be hard to beat the Yannis Kologi. Two points in the first opening heat, then two points, which makes your chances even higher now. Yeah, I think four points from the two worst gates is all right so far. Uh, Inside the gate doesn't work that way. Right? No, they're quite, quite slick and hard, so... Uh, yeah, so far I'm happy. Um, speed is good, bikes work, bike works good. So uh, you need to use every inch of the track uh, because it's it's way slicker than it, than it was in practice. But um, yeah, I think we found a good setup and we keep going. With the German speedway growing up, we didn't want to interrupt your nap uh, late afternoon. But right now you feel comfortable with your bike setup and everything. Yeah, I feel perfect. Yeah, and also the does it help you to make your booster influence the German public? Helps you a lot with the support they do. Of course, it's always great to have a meeting in front of the home crowd. And of course, there's also big pressure on on, on, on your shoulders. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but um, yeah, I try my best, and then we see how it goes. Just, just for the final world, Kai, which engines do you use there now? Which which tuner you work with? Uh, Bert van Essen since I don't know. Dutch one, Dutchman. Yes, 12, 13 years probably already. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kai. Thank you, Thank Thomas. You. And I remember, um, Sam, quite a few years ago now, Kai Hilkenbeck was the rider who I thought was going to win this meeting. And then he, he lifted out, on, yeah, the, on the, the second bend yeah. and crashed out in, in the crucial race. Yeah, he was on. He was he was in good form on that evening. And unfortunately, the track caught him out. And uh, the fans went away a little bit disappointed because they definitely had a chance of having a German rider on the top spot. It could still happen uh, tonight because he's very much in contention with four points from two rides just outside the uh, the top six overall in fact level completely level with uh, antonio limbach they've both got two second places uh, so far but we have three unbeaten riders uh, maximum speed so far here's an interesting one that's that's what they're getting up to so far wow that's interesting yeah don't see that very often do they but the 98 kilometers that's pretty quick to go around here i did uh, kai heckenbach though he's going to be coming off of um gate number three in his next one then gate number four and he says he's had Four yeah, points out of yeah. the two worst gates, and that you know Leon Madsen would love to be in this position. Oh, right now, would, he? Wouldn't he just? Here, here's uh, here's some stats now on uh, on winning times. Mikkel Mickelson, the uh, the fastest uh, so far in heat three, but uh, Adam Ellis not too far behind either in his first ride either. So uh, yeah, very much so. Gate success as well, and there you go. Outsides, we have seen some passing for, for race victories, but uh, quite often the rider off gate four has managed to make his way all the way across. Yeah, there's been a lot of a lot of second places. Um, I think there's one, uh, two, three out of blue, and um, and that's uh, you know that's another stat that's probably important. But out of, out of gate one, there's only been two second places out of gate one and two, three third places. So. You know, the inside gates are definitely difficult right now for the riders. They're preparing the track right now. And uh, when you're looking at uh, who's going to be on what we call the favorite gate so far, it's, it's a little bit mixed up. But Heckenbach is definitely coming from gate four in, um, in his one. Leon Matz is coming from gate four. Sorry, Heckenbach is coming from gate three. Um, so it's going to mix up a little bit. So there's going to be some, hopefully these guys will be scoring some more points. And it could bring that, uh, you said, 10 points to get into the top six. Is that yeah, that, that's, that's normally the way. Uh, Mickelson, Ellis and Kowalda, as you saw there on the graphic a moment ago, all on six points. Barina and Dudek on five. Limbach and Huckenbeck currently on four. You've got to go all the way down to one to find Leon Madsen from two rides. So it may well be he needs three wins to make that uh, last chance points, race. Yeah. And bearing in mind this is a rider who's made ten successive finals in the Speedway Euro Championship, I don't think we've ever seen him quite in this situation under pressure as he is now. You know, the question comes to both me and you is, um, can those four guys that missed out um, in the first round come back? And if there's a formula, this is a chance, isn't it? There's some points being mixed up right now. I completely yeah. agree. And, and look at the lineup for Heat 11. We'll see uh, Heat 9 very, very shortly. Madsen's got the outside gate in Heat 11, so that, that's the good news. The bad news is he's against Limbach, Mickelson, and Kawadze in Heat 11. So that's a, that's a blockbuster to look forward to yeah. in about 10 minutes' time. Wow, we're getting close now. Yeah. The track gradient's finished, now we're coming up to heat number nine. Yep, two-minute warning is on. Riders are on track for heat nine, and we do have one of our unbeaten men uh, in this race. And Adam Ellis is off the inside gate. Norik Madorn is off gate two. Dominic Kibera gate three. And Vaslav Melik is off the outside. So we've seen this before. Sometimes the draw can work for you. Adam Ellis is on the inside here, which has not been the best place to be. But the man off the outside, Vaslav Melik, has, has only scored one point so far. Yeah, that's it. So this is, if you're going to coach 
Ellis right now. You, you got to give him that kind of, um, you know, come on, this is it. These guys have all scored low points so far. You're in a better position. You know how to win. You've got two wins under your belt. Get out there and make this happen. But Milik being from that outside, he's a handy guy out of the starts, a check rider is. And him being right there, I mean, he would love to put three points on his board right now. And if he was going to say that just groom that racetrack, um, he's got to make it happen from there. But Ellis has got a lot of thinking to do right now coming from that inside gate. Remember, Milik at Chesterhova, naught, 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 and then three. Won his last ride when we never expected it. So there you go. it can happen. I mean, <laughs> off the inside, Bladon gate two, Kibera gate three, and Milik off the outside. Milik does normally, to be fair, normally scores some points on this track. Uh, normally eight of them. That, that's his uh, normal score on this circuit. Gets eight virtually every time, but he'll do well to get eight tonight. But let's see if he can put three on here, he can make the start here in yellow. Interesting race, Ellis off the inside, but on gate two, Kubera, who needs uh, some uh, good scores here, he's off gate three in white, and Milik goes in yellow off the outside. Third block of races here on a glorious sunny evening in Gustro, where the action's been really hot on track. Away we go then with heat nine, and Ellis makes a half-decent one from the inside gate, and Kubera makes the best one to move, um, Milik aside. Second bend is Dominic Kibera with the advantage. Minnick in second place. Ellis in third. And Kibera in White House the lead. Certainly something he needed after a couple of third places to start off with. And now let's see if Ellis can take ground here on Bus Club Minnick. But Dominic Kibera has the advantage here in race nine. Yeah, you would think for Ellis' sake right now, he'd be just focused on where he's got to be. But uh, Millick is trying to find the right line. He's right mid track. Nobody's really going super deep right now. I think he's straight as a racetrack. Maybe there's not enough material there to hold him. Ellis looks like he's going to have to settle for that one point right there. Dominic Kibera clattering the back straight fence, uh, picked up drive into the third bend, leads on to his last lap. It's Minnick in second, Ellis in third, now going wider. Track will develop as the racing uh, continues in this block of heat. And it looks like being a clear win here for Dominic Kibera in heat nine. Ellis lifting off the final bend, but it's a win for Kibera. It's second for Minnick, it's third for Ellis, and Norik Bladorn runs the last in that one. So Dominic Kibera gets himself back in contention, leads for a top six on the night with the three points there in heat nine. Decent second place for Vastav Medic and third place not disastrous at all for uh, Adam Ellis, bearing in mind points will be dropped also from the other unbeaten men in heat 11, but Kibera the winner of heat nine, Medic in second place, Ellis in third. Yeah, Dominic Kibera did a good job to get himself where he needed to, coming off of that gate number three to get in that first corner to make a decent start which is the whole secret here at Goose Trail right now. Get out front, you can start controlling where you want to be. There wasn't a really big deep line right there, but uh, Millick followed him through from that outside gate. Down the, coming off a of turn uh, two, Millick got himself into position to be able to cover the fact that Ellis kept the front wheel really tight to the inside. Come from that inside gate, trying to get as much grip off that inside line as he possibly can do, just to make sure he didn't get a zero and this heat number nine, which is uh, probably a pretty good score, really, in the contents of the whole meeting and some of the riders that are losing big points. But uh, a good job for the pole going out there to win and get three points coming from that gate number three, which we emphasize that the gates are important at this track, and they do. But as they graded it and the racing lines come back to these guys, they can use more of the track. Yep, and Dominic Kibera winning that one, as you say, an important uh, ride for him, and uh, a decent enough third place there for Adam Ellis as well. Jan Kovac has just been changing bikes ahead of heat 10 as he makes his way around to the start line. He's uh, yet to score so far. Andreas Lager off the outside also yet to score so far. Kasper Wiener off the inside with five. And now we see, we'll, we will see, with Kai Hulkenbeck on gate three with four, whether those gates will now turn to his advantage. Yeah, and uh, again, I'll just say one more time, they just put a little bit of water on the track. That's all gone now in this nice evening here at Gustro. Um, it would have come in. The outside line will have a little bit more material on it, so these guys might be able to reach. That's been the pattern so far. So they're coming to line four. Heat 10, there's the lineup with Farina in red off the inside, five points so far. Kvek off gate two in blue, yet to score, surprisingly. Kai Hukenbeck goes in white off gate three with four, and Andreas Lauger off the outside, also yet to score so far. And he did have some success here, Lauger, earlier in the season in an individual meeting, so uh, he'll see if he can make the, the outside gate work here in this race number 10. Yeah, the highlight of this one's got to be really uh, Kai Hukenbeck, which was us. Uh, you know, already speaking out the fact that he's had the worst gate, scored four points out of two of them. Um, 
and uh, now he's going to be sitting on gate number three thinking that this is the combination to keep his uh, evening alive. He did there, Marina, Quebec, Hockenbeck and Lyoga at the start line, away they go, and that's a nice start there by Hockenbeck in white, Hockenbeck's got the first bend in front of Andreas Lyoga, the German crowd's not back, looking over his left shoulder, looking over his right shoulder, already looking to see where the, the action, where the threat might come from, Andreas Lyoga is in second place with Kasper Marina in third now, here goes Lyoga trying to send one down the inside into lap two, will the inside work, they're backing away for the lead and for third place, the inside there does work for Andreas Lyoga, and there's disaster oh, there for Something stalled on his bike and he had no way of slowing it down. He's hunking back and he's on the ground. The referee's going to have to stop the race now. Red flags are out, red lights are on, and that was clearly some kind of bike failure the way it slowed on the third turn and uh, took him all the way into the fence. So Kai Hookenbeck, who'd done a lot of hard work already tonight in his early races, finds himself on the deck on uh, turns three and four, and we'll have to wait for the replay to try and establish exactly what went on. Here we go, Sam. Yeah, well, it's difficult to say, but let's see what happens. He lost power, no doubt about it. The back wheel went into the dirt, and then basically when you get close to that air fence, that thing, that thing's there to do its job, and it just hung the bike up. I imagine the bike just got caught in the air fence and the dirt at the same time and just pulled him down. Awkward fall for him. Um, I hope he's okay. Sometimes the awkward ones are the worst ones right there. But his bike definitely lost its power and gave up on him. And uh, he didn't even have a chance. To, I was wondering what was going on because he was looking over his left shoulder, his yeah. right shoulder. Already, yeah. Early yeah. So he must have felt something or was thinking something's not quite right or he didn't know where he had to be on the racetrack. But the referee obviously has had to make a decision. And he's the cause of the stoppage of this heat number 10. And he will no longer take any uh, participation in this one. Yeah, he is still being attended to by the medical staff. You can see that down there, sat up against the, the air fence. So hopefully we'll see him get to his feet in a moment. Yes, he does. Big round of applause from the German crowd for that one. And let's hope there's no damage done because he's got... Um, it's only a big blow to not score in that race, but he has got four points already. So we'll have to see if he can have a couple of good rides to come if he can still get himself in contention for the top six. Just looks like he might have uh, damaged his shoulder a bit there in that fall. Yeah, well, what, one of the things he'll be thinking about is, you know, what happened to his bike, whether he mm. lost a chain or if it's something as simple as that or it was an internal mechanical problem in the engine. I don't know, but he's got a, a gate four and a gate three still in front of him. So that could be potentially six points depending on how things start going with the conditions of the track. It was quite unusual, wasn't it? Because he, he made a really good start from, from gate three and then you don't often see a rider look looking both ways, really, as far as early as Ben 2, do you? Well, I, I thought whenever you highlighted that during the, the live race of that was that he was thinking, OK, I want to use the racetrack. I don't know who's there, if I can go that far. And then I think at the same time, we don't know. We'd have to ask him if uh, if there's a chance that Thomas maybe gets an interview back with him. Maybe he'll, he'll let us know. But maybe he felt something going on with the bike. Yeah, hopefully we'll find out whether there's a some kind of bike issue. It certainly looked like it, and you can see him uh, making the, the long walk. He's managed to, to come to grief, unfortunately, as far away from the pits as you can, so that uh, really adds, uh, adds more to it. He's making his way back down the, uh, the straight now, and let's hope that he's going to be OK to, to carry on in the meeting. But we'll have a rerun coming up with uh, Verena, Kovac and Liago. Yeah, looking at that sunshine on the cameras when they're looking up the back straightaway of this track, that's exactly the view we have. We're in a yeah. prime position, aren't we? Sitting right over the top of the pits from our commentary position. Normally, we're over the start-finish line, but uh, they gave us a choice, and we chose to be outside up here enjoying the weather. It's a lovely evening, but as you say, there is um, uh, the, the sun is setting above above Ben 3. I wonder if that was a factor. Um, yeah, so that's, that's possible. Maybe if he had a, a, some kind of mechanical issue and it, just the way it sucked him into the fence, that was... Uh, yeah. But uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll try and find out. We're using. We're both using our hands as our as our helmet yeah. visor. Um, uh, the, the riders will be able to adjust their visors going into turn three. But if that sun comes straight down, but there are some trees in the in the distance, which I think would, um, when it gets down lower, it, I don't think it's going to impede the riders' vision much. Indeed. So we'll have a, a restart of heat number ten very shortly. Here's a look at this uh, this Gustro venue, which has uh, really. Um, 
really evolved as the years have gone on. It's uh, Speedway Euro Championships been here, been coming here, of course, many times, the eighth time it's come here, but uh, a lot of the facilities here and the, the grandstand on the, on the main straight and the referee's tower, etc., that's all been done in the, in the last four or five years. They've really worked hard on this venue. Yeah, we, well, I touched on it, didn't I? I asked you that question. This is a really good track yeah. for a world championship, isn't well, it? Well, you, you, I just said so. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's got all the right facilities here. There's a hotel just down the road. We're staying in it. It's got a nice township. Yep. We've been in the square and enjoyed a meal and um, had a coffee today down there. It was good. It's it's a really good feeling in this uh, in this um, area. German Grand Prix doesn't take place too far from here at uh, Tetro. That's uh, about, uh, what, 35 k's or so down the road. So this sort of area does stage big speedway. So, they, yeah, maybe we'll think about it. They love their speedway here, too, definitely. It's well followed. And this stadium is... Uh, has got a great atmosphere when they're when they're all revved up. They certainly do, and they they were revved up with with Hooker back early in the meeting, and hoping he could have uh, won that heat ten, but unfortunately it went wrong for him in the first staging. So he is out, and Casper uh, Verina makes his way onto the track for a second go at heat ten. Five points so far off the inside gate, which has not been particularly good so far, but with Hokum back out of the equation, I guess again, you've got a rider here on the inside who's not got the favourable gate, but knows that one of the, the rivals on a, on a different gate is now no longer in the equation, so possibly more points here for Verena than he, he would have otherwise expected. Yeah, this could be the first time we get a winner from the inside, but uh, Andreas uh, Liger was actually right there, wasn't he? He was, yeah. he was performing very well in this heat 10, come from that outside gate, so this would be a good race. So here's the lineup for the restart of 8-10 with uh, Verena up on the inside, Quebec on gate two, Huckenbeck excluded, not on gate three, and Lauga off the outside. So Verena here takes on two riders who have yet to score so far. Somebody will break their, well, they'll both break, break their dog here as long as they finish the race, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed, but uh, let's see what Verena can do from the inside gate here in heat number 10. Halfway point of the qualifying races here in Gustro and uh, Verena inside gate. Quebec gate two, Lyaga off the outside. Here we go with the restart, away they go, and a decent start oh, there by Quebec. Quebec and Quebec actually knocked into Verena and now he's trying to take out Lyaga as well. He's done so, I think he's bike, got bike, bike damage. Bike damage after the crash into the first bend, and that will put him out of the equation because the race is going to carry on here. It's uh, Verena who's gone through to lead with Lyaga kind of coming back for all the inside in uh, lap two. And then we pass his bike on the top end. Oh, Jan no, that's his not bike good. on, he's going to put the red lights on, surely. The red lights have to come on because Jan Kavak has parked his bike on turn four. Well, he's clearly not happy. No. But you can't do that, surely. No, not at all. And I will make a, a bit of a prediction of what might have happened. Out of the start, He's punctured, isn't he? Yeah, Kvet actually made the start over Viona going into the down the coming out of the start. Turn left a little bit. They hooked up a little bit, which unset a Casper Viona straight away, and that could have been the cause of the damage. And you can see right now, Kvet, that's it right there. See, that probably did some damage to the back wheel. And at this point, right now, he's feeling the consequences of that he's getting a flat tire. But the referee had let the race go. There were no red lights on, so the race was continuing. You can see he comes to a stop there. And so the referee now has got to decide whether he looks back at this replay and puts all three back, yep. or whether he excludes Quebec as the cause of the stoppage. It's unusual that uh, mechanical failure or something yeah. like that will, will be the reason why they would put him back in. He's not under power when the red light comes on, and, and that right there is one of the rules. Absolutely, um, because the, you'd have thought the referee it was would have stopped it immediately if there was if he was going to call an unsatisfactory start. Yep. Because he could see the clash going into the bend. Yep. So. And I think that's exactly what um, Jan Kvek is probably upset about the fact that you know he made a start. They bumped going in the first corner. Mechanical problem. That's unfair in his eyes. Yeah. But we'll see. The bike is being brought back to the pits now. But we will see what the referee's decision is because I can't see any indication of a exclusion light on. We're looking across at the, the lights now from our position. And just watch this flash here. Let's see, see if he comes across on him. Yeah, he comes across on him, there's no doubt. He comes across him and takes care of Casper um, Viona straight away by closing the door on him, but then suffers uh, a, a back tire failure. So, so does he instigate that contact by the fact he's come across too early? That's my, he's that's my question. Blue is excluded, that's what they're saying. Well, I can understand that, because if you're going to come across from gate two, you've got to make sure you're fully across, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, oh. 
Yeah, there is a there is supposedly a a white line. I don't know, call it 30 feet. Yeah, 30 it was used to it, didn't they? Yeah. And um, once you got once you got past that, you can do what you want. You can yeah. go straight as you want to hit that white line. Then the track shears, and he was definitely in front, so he yeah. chose to go straight across. It's just unlucky that um, it happened like that. The referee had to make a decision, and I think a little bit unsportsmanlike that you know that happened, and he didn't get off the track. You know. Well, it's, that was it. The other two were, were racing hard yeah. into the second lap, and suddenly out of the corner of my eye, yeah. I saw up on the top end, he's still there. Yeah, he's not happy camper at all. Um, you know, that cost him uh, those three points. Desperately needed those points. He hasn't scored at all yet. This is heat 10. And he's gone out there and had half a chance of making a good start. Got one over Castro Viota coming off of that inside gate. Good drive going to the corner. No, again, nobody who had a gate number three. Kai Heckenback's already been um, disqualified from the heat number 10 because he had a bit of a bike failure going in to one of the corners and went down on the ground. And the restart of this one left three riders in it. And unfortunately, now there's going to be two. Well, that's, uh, yeah, very dramatic indeed. I'm not sure that the blue exclusion light is, is, is working perfectly, but uh, we had the confirmation, as you say, Sam, that he was, and then we saw it on, on the screen. But, um, yeah, I, I'm not surprised the referee made that decision in the end from what, looking at the footage. Um, and, uh, yeah, there may be some repercussions about, uh, about not clearing the track because... Uh, if he had been, if the, ref, the referee could have looked back at the replay at the end of the race, if he had to, sure. Um, if he was judging that the, the rider would be a bit impacted. Well, but if, the, if there was going to be an unsatisfactory start, then it would have been something like uh, if, if Casper Viona would have went down or something yeah. in, in that situation, so it would have been no choice but to say it was unsatisfactory, get back up, yeah. all four. But he didn't. He continued racing. Yeah. Um, and then, unfortunately, the mechanical problem happened. Yeah. And they chose not to take the bike off the track, which yeah. is unsatisfactory. But two riders left, heat yeah. number 10 coming up. I, uh, I probably blame myself for saying that the t they somebody would score a point here. And, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, curse, yeah. huh? That's uh, what we, they say. We, we did see some more drama. So Casper Verena is now uh, off the unfavored inside gate and now has lost two of his rivals from this race. Um, so let's see what uh, well, we have a match race here in the uh, re rerun of heat 10 with Verena on the inside and Liaga off uh, gate number four. We uh, do often see some unusual stuff here, but I think that's a bit of a first for us in the uh, Speedway Euro Championship. And we have Rina on the inside now and Lager off the outside. Yeah, Lager said in his uh, interview that, you know, he's, he's ready. Uh, he's on the right gate now. Uh, he's going to be focused. But um, we also see that there's five points been gathered from Viona from that inside rider right there. He's going to want to make sure to have three more points. This will be interesting. Casmarina on the inside. Andrea Farga off the outside. Re rerun of heat 10 gets underway. And from the outside, Lyaga gets to start. But they're almost neck and neck off the second bend as well. Lyaga on the outside. Marina now looking to switch his attack up on turn three and four because Andrea Farga here has the lead. And Casper Marina is going to try and build up speed to make it around the outside. And that's attractive balance nice maybe as the race goes on. But Lyaga leads. He's holding this track. That one can bring in to try and chase him down. Yeah, you gotta, you got to go deep at the same time. That little bit of roost coming off the back wheel will slow you down right there. I think it's kind of over now. I think Verona's probably... Uh, the Lyager's got the rest of the back, keeping it right up in that dirt, keeping his distance. Yeah, Lyager seems to have control of uh, this heat number 10. Verona has gone again really deep on turn three and four. There is plenty of speed to be had out there. I don't think he's got time to really, really back in. He's now turned back tight to the inside on turn one and two. Ben just to be absolutely sure, but he should be absolutely sure around the final pen. And Lauga wins that long running heat 10 over Casper Verena, and uh, only two finishers with two riders excluded. So, uh, quite a race there. Plenty of drama with the uh, hook and back crash in the first staging, and then second time the, uh, the controversy involving Jan Kavak. But uh, in the end, it's a race win for Andreas Lauga. He gets his first points of the Speedway Euro Championship campaign there in Heat 10, and second place, Casper Verena, and really done from a fast start from the outside gate. Yeah, there was uh, no mistake in that this track, if you put the back wheel in the right place, you're going to pull away no matter who's in the race with you, when there was only two of them out there. But this next race, Heat 11, is oh. coming up. Come on, David, tell us what well, you think. What do I think? I think this could be a, a big one, a really important one, a competitive one, and we have got a rider, a champion, under big pressure, and we'll see what champions can do when the pressure is on. Antonio Limbach on the inside, Mikkel Mickelson gate two, Janos Kowadze gate three, Leon Manson gate four, Mickelson 
Madsen and Kawadze, both unbeaten, 6 out of 6. Madsen, champion, outside, one point from two rides. <laughs> Madsen needs points. There's no question he needs points. The other two boys want to keep their perfect score possible. Uh, Kawazi's going to be super hungry coming out of that gate number three, but this gentleman right here, one point leading the series, was leading the series, um, and at this stage right now, desperate to make sure he does because we've got Mickelson in blue with flying on six points along with Kawazi right next to him, but right on the inside, Antonio Limbeck sitting on four. Yeah, going well. Yes. So. Really, really important heat number 11 here in Gustro, and here is the starting lineup. Antonio Limbach off the inside gate, Mikkel Mickelson off gate two, Janusz Kowalczyk off gate three, Leon Madsen off the outside. Leon Madsen in yellow needs serious points here to maintain his hopes of a top six on the night. There's some speed traps right underneath all these riders, so there is some speed amongst them all, but it's all about who gets to the fastest part of the racetrack here at this Gustro track, 298 meters, the shortest one on the SEC series um, this year and has been for many of the years when we've been here. And it's a very tricky track. The starting line is just coming off of turn four, so it's a long drag race going into the first quarter for these guys to settle in and who's going to chase the right line. It's a massive heat number 11 for the rider in yellow, particularly. Away they go. And Madsen has not made the start off the outside gate. Goodness me, what is going on here? Yasko Kawase has the advantage in white men. Antonio Lindback trying to barge his way through. Kawase leads from Lindback. Madsen's now turned for the inside. It's Mickelson at the back here. That's important as well. And Madsen has managed to squeeze his way through into second place. Kawante with the advantage. Madsen in second. It's lived back in third over Mickelson. But something is not quite right with Madsen because even off the outside gate there, he just did not make it. Yeah, Mickelson would be really disappointed that he's trolling these guys right now. But just up the inside, Lindbeck's having a good run on Madsen. Madsen's got to go really deep by Kowalski's out the front. He's got the whole track to himself. Antonio Lindbeck passes Leon Madsen. This could be real, oh, real trouble. Madsen tight. going back off the fourth man. And Lindbeck will turn back once One more. He gets inside him. Come on, say a mile clear out in front. It's Lindbeck in second place. Madsen in third. One point here for Leon Madsen. There's no good whatsoever, even though Nicole Mickelson is at the back. And heat number 11 is won by Kawante, making it three out of three. Second place, Antonio Limbach. Third place, Leon Madsen. At the back, Mikkel Mickelson. Neither Madsen or Mickelson have ever won here in Gerstrow before. And as things stand, it's highly unlikely Leon Madsen will do so tonight. He's now under huge pressure. Two points from three rides. Wow, wow, wow. Yas Kawante on to nine. Unbelievable. We were wondering what a recipe would be at the end of this evening on the point score when we had four guys missing from the first round at Chestakova, but the result stands. Kawaze wins and Lindback was second place in that one right there. And Leon Madsen settled for one point and uh, Mickelson only could pick up that last place in this rerun or this start of Heat 11. Amazing. Out of the start they go. Leo Madsen off the outside just doesn't make it, does he? The bike just does not go, does it? Let's watch it real close here. He lets the clutch out. It almost like uh, maybe he's got a little bit too much power, but something's not quite right. This guy does not usually let us down on the best gates and uh, perform out of them. He did not do in this one. Kawazi, though, out of gate number three. Blue, on blue the gets inside. a warning. Mikkel Mickelson gets a warning. Okay, Mickelson gets a warning. That cost him because he ended up uh, getting no points out of that one. Unfortunately for him, he was unbeaten going into that one. So was Kawazi, but Kawazi keeps a perfect score going. Left off where he was last year, right? Well, and then they'll be looking at this situation and saying, well, if Manson doesn't make the closing stages and carries on having a nightmare here, maybe Mickelson trips up, we'll see. You know, could Charles Kawazi score massive points? It's, uh, he looks very, very good, and uh, yeah. This is a real turnaround here. Yeah, it's really nice to see Lynn back back in the mix, though, isn't it? I mean, oh, yeah. they're back, oh, yeah. battling yeah, back yeah. and forth and actually being pretty dominant when he gets into a position. But the referee has made it known that uh, Mickelson got a warning in that heat number 11, but this guy right there, Kawadze, went out there and kept his perfect score going. And Kawadze is now two points clear in the meeting of anybody else as he keeps that perfect score going with his third victory. So uh, this will complete the final block. Dudek there in red could move on to eight points. He could move to within one of Kawadze if he wins this. He'll have it too difficult off the inside gate. Dudek off the inside, Zengota off gate two, Lebedev's off gate three, and Berger off the outside. That's the line at four, eight, 12, and that will complete the third block. And we'll also take a look then at the overall series scores as well. 
Patrick Dudek here might fancy his chances, even though it's off the inside gate. I would say he would do. Dudek would have to work really hard. If anybody can do it, he can. There's been some uh, interesting racings off that inside gate, getting close, but not actually clinching it. Heat number 12 then, Patrick Dudek off the inside. Gregor Zangotta off gate two. Lebedev's gate three, and Berger off the outside. Heat 12 gets underway. Berger lifted badly off the outside. Good start by Lebedev's in white, but uh, Zangotta in blue trying to move his way through. And he's done so. Zangotta gets through, and Dudek missed out there from the inside gate. Dudek is still pinned to the inside. Lebedev's goes shooting through in white, and Berger has come from nowhere after a poor start to go second. They're all stacking up here, but Zangotta on the outside. Oh, there's one oh, oh, there. Oh, oh, has taken down outside Lebedev's. Yeah, that could and, have been uh, so much worse. I so thought they were both got a high side there, yes. right down in front of us here on turn two. It's uh, Andres Lebedev who has taken the brunt of it of a very forceful move by Dmitry Berger into the uh, first two turns. And we'll see it again very shortly, I'm sure. But let's hope that uh, Andres Lebedev is going to be OK. Mm. Yeah, I thought we were going to... I uh, That just took my heart away. <laughs> yeah. That was so close. It could have been so much different than that. And, and I'm glad these guys got away from each other. But they did come in, and, and the, the lines that were taken, the bike hooked up, and uh, they just clashed right in the middle of that corner right there, one holding the inside and one trying to get in there. Yeah, Dimitri was getting in there, and then the bike lifted right there, and then uh, luckily he stayed on as well. But uh, Lebedev's hopefully is... Uh, going to be okay he's up and he's already off the track as we look down but that that was uh that was bad but it could have been worse absolutely and uh, dimitri berger here, here, here you see the uh, the minute there and how, how berger actually stopped on after that impact is mm -hmm. remarkable but it as i say did take uh Andrei Lebedev down with him yeah zingada was wondering what the heck was coming across yeah. him too he's on that outside line and next thing you know bikes are going everywhere in front of him and he just had to ease off that bike and figure out if he's going inside or outside. He kept the thing on and snuck through there. Uh, but Lebedev's picked himself off the ground now. We can definitely see that. Yeah, he's walking that he's back up. in now. Yeah, he's walking in. Spectacular stuff here in hit 12. It's an escape for, uh, for Patrick Dudek, who was struggling there in that race from the inside gate. But you just see that's when it can go wrong. Yep. And uh, as you say, luckily it wasn't uh, it wasn't worse. It's just uh, Lebedev is currently at the pit. Well, oh, there you see it. Mm. There you see just how tight it was. Yes. And how that wasn't a, a multi-rider incident there, I'm really not too sure. Yeah, Lebedev is just holding his left elbow a little bit, um, and they're just checking his helmet as we're looking down right now, walking. But yeah, unfortunate for these guys to get tangled up like that. And I think that was a good outcome considering what could have been. And uh, there's a chance now, so the referee will be making a decision soon what's going to happen there. Yeah, I think Lebedev's uh, okay. He's just walked back uh, into the pits. Uh, Vasov Minik, his uh, teammate at uh, Krosno, came out to uh, the, to uh, to see how he is. And also uh, Patrick Dudek uh, just checking as well. And uh, he's explaining uh, what he what he saw or what he what he heard or what he felt. I'm, I'm minding my own business. I know I'm going down. Um, yeah, he probably didn't know what the heck to think about that one. He just had to ride with it. And... Um, he did, uh, I'd seen him holding his left elbow a little bit, whether he was just checking, taking stock to make sure it was still there, I don't know, but <laughs> he's up and walking back to the carnage of his bike in the pits, and his team's gonna now have to work to get the bike right, get it straightened up. But another shot of that um, incident. You can see uh, that uh, Dimitri just comes in, front wheel over the, over the white line, the bike lifts that little bit, probably because his back wheel was just, if we watch, Dimitri's back wheel. Oh no, he's, he's in the middle middle of that turn right there, where that thing just kind of hooks up and uh, takes him over. Mm. Yeah, he's pretty, so he's got the front wheel over the. I think the, the line, I think the referees probably asked for this maybe well, because he's got to make a decision. What yeah. do you think? Well, I think I think this one is the, is the one that, that tells you uh, because I don't think that uh, that Lebedev's has, has chopped back in particularly. I think he's holding his line. So they're just checking the uh, the helmet. Well, and there's the light. The yellow light is on. Berger is excluded. So the referee was taking his time to, to look at several replays on that one. That's why we saw it uh, multiple times. But it's Dimitri Berger who was excluded. And I think, yeah, I think that's fair enough. Um, Lebedev was just say, so there you go. He's just seen it himself. So he knows he's, he's back in the rerun. And I think that would have been very harsh to... OK, he was the man who fell, but the, but the fall was, was down to the, sure. the fact he was hit very hard by Dimitri Berger. So incidents in heat uh, 10, now we're in heat 12.
coincidence is keep this one. We're not going to say nothing, are we? Well, well no, no, no. <laughs> we'll see. The, uh, the drivers are making their way on the track for the rerun. I, I suspect that just the two-minute warning just goes on now. I suspect that Lebedev might appreciate a bit more time to, uh, to, to get uh, mechanically sorted out. I'm just looking down in the pits now. They're frantically rushing the bike uh, back towards the... Uh, uh, the start, uh, well, the, the, the push-off area. Which is where they fuel the bikes. So yes. that's what, what they're doing now right there. But Patrick Dudek coming in this heat number 12 gets a second chance coming from that inside gate because he was sitting on five points, is sitting on five points. And he's now grooming his inside gate, trying to see if he can make something out of it. Now, we won't have anybody come from the outside gate, um, but Lebedev will be coming from gate number three, which will now be the outside. And he'll be able to uh, hopefully make something out of his bike that he's getting on the track with right now and it looks like it's a, one of the clean bikes and they pulled it out so he wasn't able to possibly keep the same bike he's been riding yeah i think there was some there was some damage there we saw some bits fly off it when the uh, the crash happened so uh, yeah so let's hope this one goes well from his point of view uh dudek looking to add to his five points so far then so got up currently on two, Lebedev's on three, and uh, Berger, bad night for him, bearing in mind he scored 10 in the first uh, meeting, first round in Chester Hover. Uh, Berger will be going no further here tonight, just needs to try and get some points from his last two rides, but uh, losing ground on the top three overall. But things are going to shake up big time if Madsen doesn't make the final here. Yes, of course. Dudek yeah. on the inside, Zangotto gate two, and Lebedev's gate three. We really didn't know what was going to happen, did we? How, never, how never do we keep this circuit. series tight? It always does come down to the last round, doesn't it? It does. And it looks like that just might be exactly how it's working up now. But uh, let's see what Dudek can do from that inside. That's probably the important race for him. Moment so, in 12, restart gets underway. Better start that time by Patrick Dudek. Lebedev has gone across there from gate three to take the advantage here over Dudek. With they got to in third place. But Lebedev, who was on the deck last time out after being brought down by Dimitri Berger, has got back up and got back on the rerun and leads it from Dudek, who would take a couple of useful points here, Patrick Dudek, in the restart. Even if he can't make his way through, so he got to in third place. But uh, fair play to Lebedev, got himself back up and leads the race again. He sure does right there. I bet you really thought that uh, Dudek might be thinking about it at this stage right now, right up in the dirt line to see if he can do something. He's keeping it down low. See if he can get the Lebedev's off. He's going to change his course now. He's up in the high line now. So he's going in deep now, see if he can build some momentum up to put the pressure on Lebedev, which is controlling this heat number 12 now after picking himself off the ground. Inside line works is early, but Lebedev's on turn three and four. That really in order to maintain control of this race. It's Dudek in second place, then Gotta in third, and Lebedev will win heat number 12. The Latvian takes the flag over Dudek in second place, and then Gotta in third. So Lebedev moves on to six points from three rides with that victory. Good character shown then after the crash. First time out with uh, Dimitri Berger being excluded. Dudek takes a couple of points to move on to seven, and uh, he is uh, well placed tonight. Confirmation then of the result of Heat 12, a win for Anze Lebedev. Second place for Patrick Dudek, and in third spot, uh, Gregor Zengotta. Lebedev's coming from gate number three with the white helmet color, makes a great start. Straight away covers that inside line to down to shut down the drive of Dudek, which has only had one chance right now. If he can just get himself in front, he might have a chance coming off that inside gate where nobody's won yet. And he tried his, desperately tried to get in there as uh, Lebedev just took control of the race after that. I thought at one stage it might have been an outside line that would have tempted Dudek to go into it from the word go, but he did, and he stayed down low, and Lebedev did control the race mid-track inside the whole way. Yep, a win for Antoine Lebedev takes him into the, the top six on the night with that race victory. It takes him in front of Antonio Limbach, who has three second places so far. That win for Lebedev is important on the countback. Here's how things done. Giannis Kawante away and clear with nine points out of nine so far. Ellis, Verena, and Dudek all on seven. Mickelson, Lebedev, and Limbach on six. As I say, those race wins, two for Mickelson, one for Lebedev, keeps them in front of Limbach on the countback. In the series overall, Mickelson leads the standings on 21. Madsen and Verena both have 18. Dudek has 15, and Lebedev has 14. And, of course, Kawadze started from uh, zero. Uh, he is on nine uh, at this stage. So that's the situation in the standings. We've been looking back on some great meetings so far in the past from Gustrov. Let's go back to a real classic final from 2018. And this is all about Madsen in white and Robert Lambert in yellow.
Elbow into the first bend. Why did they go off turn two? And look at this from Robert Lambert. Ah, oh, kept it going. I tell you what, Batson did everything he could do to stop the charge from the Great Britain rider. That's Robert Lambert really reached out in the dirt there, picked up the drive right there, and didn't look back after that. Real happy to be in that position, wasn't he? The other riders in this one, uh, Emil Seifudinoff and uh, Mikkel Mickelson. But uh, this, this, for me, was a big breakthrough moment in Robert Lambert's career, the, a, a real big meeting victory. Uh, he finished third in the series overall. He went on to win it overall a couple of years later. And this was a statement here of where he was going in the sport. Absolutely. This is what we got to see, the quality of the rider going out there and really reading the track well and showcasing what he's all about. And as you said, man, he went on. He's doing bigger and better things now. And he just keeps going for it. There's a lot more coming out of this guy, but this was a successful night for him. This was a really popular victory. There were British fans here on the night, and uh, that was Robert Lambert taking victory in 2018. And that was also the only time Mikkel Mickelson has been on the rostrum in this meeting as well. But uh, it meant an awful lot, this did. And uh, you can see that the celebrations, I can tell you, went on a lot longer after the meeting on that one. Absolutely. A good charge from him to be able to do that. He did do it. Um, he, did, he did himself so much... Uh, so much uh, ability was shown on this track of that day for him. As you said, they springboarded him from this point on right there, and he's gone out to enjoy uh, a pretty healthy uh, speedway career after this thing here and keeps going with it. Yep, that was a fantastic uh, fantastic win for Robert Lambert over Leon Manson in 2018. Let's go back to 2023. Down to the pits. Let's hear from Thomas. Yes, thank you, Dave. Uh, we've seen Robert Lambert, uh, Krzysztof Tegelski, former Pool Pirate star and GP star, right now mentor to Janusz Kowalski. He's the, our guest at, at the pits area. Robert Lambert, top man in terms of technical skills. Not everybody who hasn't raced at Wimborne Road is the guy we would love to love him, his skills, right? I love to watch Robert. It's a pleasure to watch. Yes, but sometimes I, I want from from him much more than we dynamic uh, because i think he he should be world champion not in the future soon so uh, sometimes i see some moments on the track when he's behind to give him the racing line yeah to use even to be more aggressive more, more ag not maybe aggressive because he's aggressive enough i think but Mm, not so much polite and gentleman yeah different different lines to choose to to pass the top riders in the world but i i hope i i'm sure he will do it but take what the way he passed dominic kubera hit number nine that was the masterpiece from robert lumber mm, yes uh, robert is a fantastic rider and he has all the way in his in his in his uh, head to to pass anyone in the world so i really really concentrate on him very often when i have the option to watch him i really do it with big pleasure janusz kowodzi he has won in the past the sgp round in prague czech republic fan pillars great velocity great speed nice guy to watch nice guy to cooperate but right now missing the first round in chester Hover. even he's unbeatable invincible tonight in gustrov it's so tough for him to be on top of a tree after round number four. Yes, but uh, he has nothing to lose. He needs to uh, collect the points and he's doing it tonight. I hope he will be in the final. He loved the track, which is a little bit strange. Strange, because, yeah. yeah. because he's a guy who is good and fast in the Prague, <laughs> for example, yeah? or Leszno or Krosno sometimes. But but on the smaller tracks he has normally problem. But this track is is smooth and nice. He he he, he knows how to don't turn the bike and that works here. And he set up what he normally use in the big tracks. Maybe it's strange, but it suits here too. So maybe that's an uh, adventure. But Segwa, we not mention very often that the way Janusz Kolodzi is a fabulous engineer. He knows so much about machinery. He's crazy with all the clockworks and everything, how to work, what jet to put on, what gearbox, what the rear sprocket to put on. A few years ago, I was thinking that that's a problem for him. because Too he much was, thinking. Yeah, he was sitting in a workshop 24 hours a day. In the night, in the day, he was processing all the time. Yes, but now he's using from this time, I think, because he has not spent that time in the workshop now. He has perfect mechanics, but he's 
thinking how to s find a good setup for a bike. He knows the engines very well. He works perfectly with Ashley Holloway. And when I listen to them, when they're talking together, looks like they don't they know what they talking about <laughs> which is which is not normal with speedway rider isn't it yeah <laughs> it's true yeah so it's a really hard for the riders in these times i think who has no idea what to do with bike after the race and these many riders like this even in a gp that's why that's why they have a problems free zero free zero and that's the problem but to be the engineer is not everything in Speedway, must be top rider too. <laughs> it's a pleasure to listen to uh, Krzysztof Sigielski, former Paul Paris rider, but it's also good to know that Janusz Kowodzi is a man of many talents. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Thomas. Thank you to uh, Krzysztof Sigielski. He was a great talent to watch. Uh, Back in the day, what, uh, 20 years or so ago, a uh, really fantastic rider. Back at uh, back at the Speedway Euro Championship here in Gustrov today. And, well, this is a meeting that really could shake up the overall standings, could shake up the series as a whole. Mikkel Mickelson is the fastest man on track here in Gustrov at 99 k ahead of uh, Gregor's Zengotta on uh, on 98. As we, uh, we take a look at the uh, track preparation, and Mickelson still with the, the fastest start so far. Yeah, so he's got the, the perfect ingredients to be able to win all the races, but unfortunately, he's just lost out a little bit, and he got a last place in his last riding out. He was unbeaten until that point, but here we go. This is the, the best time so far with Mickelson, as we've already highlighted, 58.5. He leads all the stats apart from the meeting itself, because Giannis Kowalski leads that. He's still got a chance. Oh, he's yeah, still yeah. got a chance, yeah. That he won't give it up, he's got, but he's got two inside gates he's going to mm. finish the evening on, and that's going to go. be a tall order to <laughs> actually keep going, isn't it? Absolutely. It's... Uh, yeah, but he's got he's got the points on the board, Kiwadze, and he'll be trying to get what he can from those inside gates. But the big story here is Leon Madsen with two points from three rides and very unlikely now to make the top six. And let's say he wins his last two, could score eight points. That's very, very unlikely. Um, and therefore, this is a huge chance for Mickelson and Verena and the others to make this into a, a, a real series because um, Madsen just does not miss finals. And every indication that tonight this this curse of gustro if you like the fact he's never won here he's come second three times it's going to carry on unless unless he wins this 813 from the white helmet color he's got to have to try and dig deep right there to make that one uh, become a reality he's got um three other racers in this um race that one on five points all right there might be a uh, Dimitri's only got one point, and then you got Casper Viona's You've got gone, seven yeah. points. Yeah, so you know they're they, they they they're actually in the points, and they and especially Viona, he's going to have to see if he can, you know, if he wins this one, that's going to put him in a very good position, is it? Ten Certainly, points, he's yeah. on seven so far. So yeah, really, really good. He's on gate two, and Kubera, who's on uh, on five points so far, and he's on the outside. So a, a chance here also for him, of course, uh, Dominic Kubera, uh, with a win in heat nine that got him uh, back into the meeting, and he's off the outside here. So right now the sun is starting to set and uh, it's starting to get cooler and the bikes do change. Will Madsen's bike come to him now? Uh, who knows, we'll have to see how it goes in this next couple of races. But uh, Casper Friondo would know that he's gonna have to be chasing um, a setup to be able to get out of gate number two if he's gonna complement that seven points he's already got wrapped up. Here's the lineup then for E13, Berger, one point so far off the inside. Verena with seven off gate two. Madsen with just two in white off gate three. And Kibera in the yellow off the outside. He's on five. Yeah, and he came off of a race win last. So let's see if he can uh, keep that uh, going right. But Leon Madsen, the story of the evening, only two points to his name, and uh, he will not be happy with that. I think, really, it, it could well be a points-gathering exercise here. We try and get six points from his last two to try and help him in the standings, but we'll see what happens. Heat 13, Berger, Verena, Madsen and Kibera at the start line, and we have a slight delay whilst the start marshal gets things sorted. Something going on just over the, over the fence again. The start marshal, has, you can see him there, he's just seen something, I think, just beyond the start line. That appears to be sorted, so they'll rev again in just a moment. 
13. Berger, Verena, Madsen and Kivera. Important race here in Kostrov, away they go. Madsen again with a shockingly poor start from gate three. It is Kivera who leads, and Kivera gets the advantage over Berger with Verena in third place. And Leon Madsen just cannot get it right here so far tonight. Out the back, he's trying to go as far down the inside of Verena, up on the top turn, but Casper Verena rides the outside there, neck and neck for third place. Out in front is Dominic Kivera. It's Berger in second. Madsen's now got the serving. He's far more than that. Oh, wow. Verena's lost big time in this one, trailing in last place there. As we see Madsen going to the outside line to see if he can fix up the just created the track. A little bit of water's been put down. It won't be so easy for him to get the track in there. But uh, Kavera out front, but he's under a bit of pressure by uh, Dimitri Bear coming on the inside now to see if he can sneak up underneath him. Well, Dimitri Berger, excluded from his last ride, trying to make a passing move again. Moving in now, Leon Madsen in white. Is there one final bit here by Leon Madsen? Because Berger there will get trapped on the inside. Can Leon Madsen make it around the outside here on turn three and four? Massive moment here. Madsen's the finishing line, very close on the line for, for second place. Dominic Kubera in yellow hanging on close for second because uh, Berger found himself hemmed in on the back straight and Madsen went for the outside. Kubera is now right back in play with eight points from four rides, including two race wins. But a frantic strap once again there. Casper Verena missing out in the uh, in the closing so well, in the, throughout the race actually he's left with seven from from four rides but uh, here is confirmation of heat 13 berger held on for second place berger held on for second place manson in third only gets one so kibera berger manson verena and that run of 10 successive finals for leon manson going back to ganesh 2020 is over and it all started right here you can just see the posture of leon Madsen. it's like everything just dropped the bike did not go forward whatsoever. He's trying to pick the pieces up by the time he gets in turn three as De Dominic Cabrera gets out in front. Here on the inside is Dimitri Bjerge trying to get him on that inside to get into the muscle of things right there. He ended up pulling off a second place, which is quite handy for himself after picking himself off the ground. Well, he actually didn't go down, but he was a part of an incident with Lebedev was on the ground, but out in front right there, we can see that uh, Dominic Cabrera was there, but trailing and uh, in last place was Casper Viona, which does uh, having difficulties with the bike even. It looks like he's just not happy with what's going on here as Leon Madsen tries to reach from the outside. And that's how close so it looks like him. It's almost like he's got it there, but he doesn't not quite. get it. Yeah. I, I thought he might from our initial yeah. first view, but, uh, but he didn't. And it's only one point for Leon Madsen in heat 13. He's only got three from four rides on the night so far. And it's all about damage limitation for him. No more than that chances for others chances for others in the overall standings because we'll be halfway through the series at the end of this meeting and there are chances for the likes of patrick dudek who goes in heat 14 in the blue hummock color Lyaga off the inside with three dudek off gate two with seven limbach in white off gate three with six and milik in yellow off the outside with three dudek has got seven points so far try not to it here Yes, and if he's sitting on 15 points overall right now, but right now it looks like Mikkel Mikkelsen's got 21 points overall, so he's leading this series. But these guys lining up right here, Dudek's gonna want to make sure he adds to that seven points. Yeah, Dudek on 15 in the series at this point. As you say, Mikkelsen on 21 is the leader, and Mikkelsen, who ran a last place in his foot in his last ride of this meeting, but will be desperate to try and uh, really maintain that situation over Leon Manson and get the chance to extend it because uh, any chink in the Leon Manson armory has been virtually unheard of for, for the last five years of Speedway Euro Championship. And this is his worst meeting, quite simply, in, in such a long time. We'll have to go back through the archives to find out when the last time he scored as low as this was. But anyway, heat 14, it's uh, Lyaga off the inside, Dudek off gate two, Limbach off gate three, and Milik off the outside. Plenty of drama already here in Gustrov. Here is heat number 14. Mike Trev and away they go, and a good start by Lyaga from the inside. Can he make it there, or will Limbach come across in white? Limbach and Lyaga contesting on the back straight, and Limbach in white gets the lead over Lyaga. It's Dudek in third place, coming out. Bastard Milik, Stuart Race not out in front, but Antonio Limbach here leads from Andreas Lyaga with Patrick Dudek in third. He'll try and go for the outside now on the second lap. And can Dudek here turn one point into two? He's just going, going up deep right there, and high out, out in front right now, side Limbach. Finally winning some races in this sex series. Nice to see him out in front right there. Dudek's going to be working really hard up that inside there to see if he can actually turn that one point.
disappointed in two, but uh, Andres Lager is going to be really happy sitting in that second place. Nice position to be in coming from that inside gate as well. Yeah, it's good to see Antonio Limbach riding well. So the spectacular performer when he is certainly on it, and he is here in heat 14. Limbach over Lager. Lager really frustrating Patrick Dudek, who's in third place and may not go any further in this race. It's a win there for a really impressive win for Antonio Limbach with Andreas Lager in second place. And that takes uh, definitely takes a point there off uh, Patrick Dudek as well. So Dudek is uh, now on eight points from four rides. He's still safely in the top six for now, but will need something in a very tough heat 19, which is on the way for him. But Antonio Limbach, who made the final here in Gustro in 2019, he is the winner of heat 14. Second place, Andreas Lager, third, Patrick Dudek. Yeah, Lindek's score jumps up three points in this race. He had three seconds coming into this race right here and uh, really took control of that gate number three to get himself in a really good position under a little bit of pressure right at the beginning, but he looked comfortable right after that. So he gained another three points, sitting on nine points now after four rides. So he's got to be pretty happy with this evening so far. I'm sure he will be. Nine from four. Uh, his uh, last race comes up in heat 17. He'll be going off gate two in that race. That won't, won't be easy for him, but uh, nine is a good situation. Level with Kawadze, who's still got to heat 15 to come. And then we've currently got Kubera and Dudek both on eight. Yeah, this, this race was just one of those things where you just got to go out there and make the best of it, take the best gates and make them work. And the Swede done exactly that. Antonio Limbach looking good here this evening in Germany as we move on to heat 15, which features the unbeaten Janusz Kowadze, who will ride in blue. Norik Bladorn, who's only scored two points so far, seems to have been more involved in the action than that, but he's off the inside there in red. Kowadze will be in blue on that maximum so far. Lebedev, who is very much in the frame, there is uh, Kowadze in the blue helmet colour. There's Lebedev in white, who is really in contention on six. And uh, Jan Kivek, who has yet to score so far, and a rather fraught night so far, he is in yellow off the outside gate. Yeah, you got a favourite that uh, uh, Lebedev is the one that's probably going to make uh, this race. I know Kowadze's unbeaten so far, but, you know, gate two is just not performing whatsoever, no matter how good of a rider you are. But uh, the pole could possibly prove me wrong. <laughs> we'll see if he can, if he can win this off gate two, then, uh, then he, we can certainly say he enjoys this circuit. And uh, could he become first rider to win two events here in Speedway Euro Championship at Gustro. We've seen seven meetings here in the past, seven different winners. Kawanti is the only one who can win in that situation. He's the only one back in the field tonight. He's won before, and he's in blue here in heat 15, and he's not really made the start. He gets squeezed down there on the first bend, but Dawn in red makes the start with the limiters in second place. in white around the outside yellow. Jan Kivak, and now we see what Kawanti can do from the back. And he goes to the back there, up on turn three and four, and right round the outside, Jan Kivak has gone round everyone, and now Kawanti is falling in through. Suddenly, the outside working as they go right round the board, and Kivak has the lead, and I think Kivak Kawanti right here will be in second place. Kawanti's got into that second place right now. He should have tried to get there a little bit quicker. I'd like to see Jan Kivak finally getting some points. He went out there and read the conditions perfectly. Comes right outside gate, put his back wheel in the dirt, got some speed. Kawanti might be settling for second. This first points he's dropped. I think it's still a good second place for Kawanti in the blue helmet color. Off gate two in second place. It gives him control of the meeting. They're heading in towards the final stages. The real structure off for the third place. And Lebedev goes strongly inside. Norik Madonna tries to hit back on the top turn. But it's going to be a win here for uh, Jan Kivak. It's something to take for a difficult meeting. Good ride by Kivak to win it. Second place was Kawanti. That's his first point dropped. And uh, Kivak certainly did enjoy that, uh, that, that race victory. And fair play to him for that. Quite rightly so. But Kawanti gets a couple of important points points there in second place to take him on to 11 he still controls this meeting I think he'll be happy enough with with those points on the board in that race and Lebedev's uh, worked hard for third against Norrie Bladorn his confirmation of heat 15 results with the uh, young Quebec the winner Kawante in second Lebedev's third and Kawante now leads the meeting on 11 points yeah, Nordic Bellardo, I think, was actually leading yeah, this for was. a second, wasn't he? Come from that inside gate. Now, that's very surprising well, straight Kovet away, yeah. And Kovet's on the outside line. He had no place to go but to just dedicate himself to that outside dirt right there. As Kowadze gets beat up, he's trailing last place right now. And just up the inside, Lebedev's in the white there. He's trying to squeeze in there. And Kowadze does a good job of getting around it. But it was all about Jan Kovet that makes a really good move keeps it up high and gets plenty of speed out of that bike to pull around the rest of the field 
keep his momentum going and is static at the end of this race as he's even going up and touching the dirt lines going into the corners as a lot of racers do these days. You get that little bit of extra drive. They can just kiss the fence as they turn in. But you see Ladorn right there getting uh, taken up. He gets taken up again right there by Lebedev's right towards the end of this thing. He doesn't even come out with a point. Yep, harsh reality there for Norrit Ladorn learning curve tonight. Definitely, if Lebedev gets the third place. So, Kawadze leads the meeting on... <laughs> so, Quebec enjoyed the race victory. Yeah, yeah. Kawadze leads the meeting on 11 points. Limbach is on 9. Kubera and Dudek are both on 8. And in heat 16, we have Adam Ellis, who's currently on 7. We've also got Mickelson, who's on 6. Uh, they are coming up in this race. Here's confirmation at the start line of heat 16. Mickelson off the inside gate, so... Mickelson off gate one, Ellis off gate two. These are the riders who are highest in the standings in this race on six and seven points off gates one and two with Zagotta off gate three and Huckenbeck off the outside. They're on three points and four points respectively. Yeah, and to remind everybody, Huckenbeck had a, a bike problem when he was in a good position in his last ride and didn't score, but it was had the two worst gates and got four points out of it. Now sitting on a nice one. Sitting on the outside gate and still with the chance here, Kai Huckenbeck because uh, sixth place on the night is currently held by Kasper Verena on seven points. And if Huckenbeck can win this one, that will take him on to seven as well. Then I'll be all to play for in the final block of races. Mickelson, Ellis, Zengotta and Huckenbeck lead 16 to complete round four here in Gustrop. Away they go. And it's a good start there by Mickelson. Makes quite a good one from the inside. Huckenbeck does come across first from gate four. He's got the advantage. Mickelson in second place. Ellis is trying to squeeze Zengotta out. He's gone from the inside up on the third bend. But uh, looks good here for, for Kai Hooker back, and they're really stacking up for third and fourth as they got to go for our nose into the second lap. And up Mickelson tries the inside on third two. Is that going to work for Mikkel Mickelson or will it be? Hooker back around the outside. Mickelson on the inside looks like he's past Kai Hooker back. Yeah, he's just got to make a decision, don't you? Mickelson chose to stay on the inside. Hooker back is going to go super, super, super deep. He's going to build up a lot more speed right there, but the Dane looks like he's controlling this one unless something goes wrong at this point. Well, again, Huckenbeck's trying the outside. Huckenbeck really needs a win here. Got to get a win on the board, Kai Huckenbeck. Now he turns back, maybe trying to confuse Mickelson. Mickelson leads from Huckenbeck, who's going to try and go narrow into the third bend, but Mickelson's read that move perfectly, and they'll race into the third and fourth bend for the final time. Clever ride by Mikkel Mickelson to win heat 16. Second for Huckenbeck, you'll see that the point drops. Third for Zengotta, and Adam Ellis misses out there from the graveyard gate too. That's Mikkel Mickelson's third third race win of the evening and that puts him in a strong position and he is the first rider to win off the inside gate had to or either gate one or gate two in fact had to work for it but he got there Mikkel Mickelson winning heat 16 Kai Hook and Beck in second place Gregor's then got to in third and that moves Mickelson up to second overall on the night yeah when I was watching the training early on uh Mikkel Mikkelsen really looked like the guy that looked pretty set up with this setup. It looked like the bike was going forward all the time. Nobody's won off that inside gate, and nor did Mikkel win off that inside gate, but he did get himself in a really good position. It was the German rider, and the fans were going ecstatic when Kai Huckenbeck made the start, got himself out in front right there. Zingata gets into the mix right there with Adam Ellis to squeeze him and get into that uh, third place. Those guys battle for that. Ellis's night pretty much is ending in that position right there. He has scored some good points right up into that point, but he did not need to be in last place. But out in front, Mickelson just worked that inside line the whole way, and uh, he pulled it off. <laughs> and one of the German fans is really happy. I think he's German. I'm only <laughs> taking that out. But Mickelson goes out there and gets a handy three points to add to his lead. All Overall, he's now sitting on 24 points. Five points in front of the Sundays, which is yeah. a really healthy situation to be in. So he'll be, he'll be very pleased with that as he... Uh, uh, back in the pits. So here we are in Gustrov. It's round two of the Tower on Speedway Euro Championship. They've all had four rides. Yannis Kowalczyk leads the meeting on 11 points. Mikkel Mickelson on nine, leading Antonio Limbach on countback. Three wins to one. Limbach on nine, Kubera on eight, Dudek on eight. Ellis leads Verena and Lebedev's on countback. That's because Ellis has two race victories to his name as well. You can forget Leon Manson for the closing stages, or certainly in terms of final or race off, but he will need to. Uh, win his last ride just to get some points on the ball because Mickelson leads the standing on 24 points from Leon Madsen with Arena on 18. We mentioned the 2019 final here which featured Antonio Limbach who's going well here tonight. Let's take a look back at 2019. 
This one featured Grigory Laguta, Bartosz Schmektawa, Leon Manson and Antonio Limbach. And Grigory Laguta, the man there in red, made it from the inside. Better start from the inside then than we've seen tonight. It sure has. And Leon Manson in the white helmet color right there has worked off that gate number three again. And he's having to work hard here. But it was just very difficult to make anything off that. Uh, again, Leon Manson just sitting there in second place. Hey. This was the opening round of the series in 2019. This was the year that Grigory Laguta thought he would have won it, probably should have won it. And that was the year, if you remember, Mikhail Mikkelsen reeled him back in in Horzhov, and they had, they went for a runoff for the title. But at this point, Grigory Laguta was in control of the series. Yeah, he was doing in really good form right there. And unfortunately for the guy, he had to settle for uh, not getting the big prize. But here, Leon Madsen in this race doing everything he possibly could to to get him. But again, another second place, hey? Yeah, this, this on this occasion, right in the inside, we saw Lambert going around the outside the previous year. On this occasion, the inside was the place to be in the final because Laguta never moved off that line all race. <laughs> all race long, yeah. So that's good. That just goes to show the how this track performs, you know, the results over the years. And his son right there, super happy that he that he's won this one, eh? Yep. Good one. That was uh, a Speedway Euro Championship victory for uh, Gregory Laguta. And he uh, had uh, plenty of success uh, over the years as well with a total of four victories in the Speedway Euro Championship and never quite managed to secure the title itself. And that was one of a hat-trick of uh, second places for Leon Madsen as well. So that was the action from 2019 back to 2023. And let's join Thomas in the pits. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Sam. Lovely to chat with Casper Vorina. Always a big pleasure to speak to the former Coventry Bees and Paul Pirates. How do you like uh, this kind of track in Gistrov, Casper? It was good the first uh, three hits. Now I messed up a little bit on the gate, so uh, we keep working and keep uh, figuring what's uh, the correct setup to just win the gate and don't uh, look back. You've been so fast in the opening round in Chesterhova in June. Very good racing from your side. Is the European crown, if you're going to win this title, is it a good venture for you to become the Speedway Grand Prix star in the future? It's a long way to go, but that, that's definitely the point and the, and the goal for me. So we we definitely want that. Casper, we love we know we you love the technical tracks like this one, very tight, even less than 300 meters. What's the what's the difference? What's the difficulty to race on this kind of track? It's not that really difficult, not technical track, it's just round, most, like most other tracks. Circle, yeah? Like, it's just a circle, but the, the most technical issues are uh, in the setup, so uh, whoever spins the le uh, less is, is winning. And then, you know, the gates are pretty important, because if you're in the front, you can dictate wherever you go. So, uh, it's difficult, it's uh, on the edge, it's, it's going to be tough, it's going to be close, but let's, let's keep the focus and... Uh, Try to win. You had a tough contest last night against Grudgens in Polish Extra Liga. Did you make a bit of a time to have, catch a bit of a sleep and have a short nap in the night? Yeah, I fully recovered. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you had a wonderful win. Although you love basketball action, you've got the jersey from which LeBron James, or who, who is on you? Is it Kevin Durant? Where? On your jersey. I have I have uh, any jersey you can think of that, uh, you know I collect the things uh, at home yeah at home but on the on the Kevlar's you can see the one and only Lakers colors so uh, King James is the one King James thank you very much lovely to chat the big speedway icon from Rubin thank you <laughs> thank you Thank you very much indeed to, uh, to Thomas and, and for Casper and also a nice mention there of uh, Paul Pirates who are fighting for their long-term future and Coventry Bees who have got a, a, a very, very big uh, uh, planning appeal inquiry to be held in September and that's a, a big thing for British Speedway and Catherine Road for Coventry in 2016. Back at the 2023 Tower on Speedway Euro Championship, he's a title contender, Sam. He's got 18 points, third overall. He knows that Madsen is not going to score big tonight. Mickelson's on 24 overall. Here's some stats from the night. Mikkel Mickelson is still the fastest man from much earlier in the meeting when the track was in condition for the fast times. Uh, Adam Ellis was uh, just fractionally behind him on that one. And that's got to be encouraging a bit. Those top three guys all still are, are, are a chance of winning overall here. Uh, but the way the lineup is for the next uh, rounds, those gate stats right there tell a story that nobody's been able to win off gate number two. One win on the inside, and that was Mickelson that done that. But the, the what's coming up in front of us right now is we got uh, we got Adam Ellis is going to finish on an outside gate. It's got to be pretty good. Sitting yeah. on seven points, too. And then you got Norik... Um, 
well, Nork's on an outside game, but then the other combination there is Andreas Lebedev's coming on seven points, coming from the outside in the first race after they grade this racetrack. So what you're saying there is somebody like Dominic Kubera who's got the inside gate in a really tough-looking hit 17 uh, could yet be under pressure. Absolutely, and nobody's really, other than Mickelson, that's actually done anything, sitting on eight points. But all these guys, it will be very dis difficult, I would say, because they just groomed the racetrack for that inside to really work. I'm Antonio Limbach right there in the blue helmet color is going to be coming out of the, as we've already claimed, gate number two is the graveyard of this 298-meter uh, racetrack. You just cannot get out of that turn, that gate number two, to get into that turn to be able to battle with these guys. It, it really is. It takes the best of all of them. There's been a few second places. There's been, yeah, four second places out of gate number two. Um, one win and after, uh, no, uh, one point, one point. Yeah, a, a few third places, you know, there's just very, very hard. Let's take a look at the overall standings then whilst the tractor grading is still taking place. Uh, Mikkel Mickelson leads the series on 24 points. Reminder that the points in tonight's final will count towards that series. Mickelson on 24, Leon Madsen on 19, Kasper Verena on 18, Patrick Dudek 16, and Zayz Lebedev 15. That's the current top five in the standings overall. And then the key ones tonight with one ride to come. Kawadze on 11, Mickelson with nine, Limbach with nine, and then you've got Kibera and Dudek both on eight. Ellis on seven, currently in the top six. Verena, we've just heard from, and Lebedevs, they're on seven as well, just outside. And Hockenbach, who's on six, and will surely feel he should have had far more than that. And then Leaga on five. That's how things sound on the night. Leon Hudson with, with three points, and really all he can do in his last ride is just try and pick up points. Absolutely difficult for him, but with Heckenbach coming out in this one on gate number three, he must feel you know, he's going to have a little bit there. Lebedev's, though, will be sitting on that outside gate. He's going to be happy about that one, but it's going to be uh, Dominic Cabrera that's coming from the inside, as we got in our picture right there. He'll be thinking, you know, what's going to be the combination? And right now, they're just going to build on that as they're going to be pushed off to approach this heat. Uh, number 17, they just groomed the racetrack. The sun has set it, and now we're sitting on a totally different kind of conditions for these engines. The boys would have been chasing that setup. We already heard that, uh, you know, Casper Viona said that, you know, I'm just chasing the right setup now um, from this interview with Thomas, thinking that, you know, this is important now at this stage. Vital, vitally important, and 817 about to come on the track. They did also put plenty of water down during that break as well. Um, and obviously with the with the sun going down that that won't clear as quickly as it did before so again conditions could be different and uh, you know maybe the inside might work we'll, we'll see but uh, Kibera Limbach will come back at Lebedev on, on track now yeah I think it'd be very difficult even if you to get to get yourself to that first turn uh, with a little bit of water they put down it's going to be a challenge for these guys yeah well, they'll make their way round. Dominic Kubera on eight, Antonio Limbach on nine, Kai Hukenbeck on six, and Andres Lebedevs on seven. So, really tough race to call. They've all been very much involved in the meeting so far, but uh, what will be the mark to make the, the semi-final at least? Will it be nine? Will it... I probably won't need ten now. Because yeah, it would definitely probably be about nine, I would say. I think so, yeah. yeah. We've currently set, cut, off, cut off currently at seven, so we'll see. View from above the start line here in Gustro ahead of the first race of the final block of heats before the last chance semi and the final. Really entertaining event for round two of the Speedway Euro Championship here. Always throws up some surprises and it is doing two tonight. Kibera on the inside in red, Lim back in blue off gate two, Hookham back in white off gate three, Lebedev's in yellow off the outside. Yeah, I would say that conditions that they've, they've uh, grimmed the racetrack is is going to make things a little bit difficult with the water they put down will hopefully be good towards the end. They won't have to put no more water on, just create it up a little bit. But the riders are going to be challenged right now to get out of that start as they do every time they get on this uh, start line, which is just coming off of turn four. It is not conventionally down the middle of the straightaway. And these riders have said so many times this racetrack rides like a big bowl and they just got to keep the momentum going. But the one thing that's important right now is set up and getting out of the start. Crucial, heat 17 on the way. This will begin to set targets for top six on the night. And uh, even uh, potentially if, if Limbach wins it, targets for top two, an automatic place in the final. So all on the line here in heat 17. 
with Kibera on the inside. Limbach on gate two, Hukum back gate three, Lebedev off the outside. Fight to heat 17 at the start line, and it gets underway. Even breakaway, Dominic Kibera in red. Kibera gets the first bend in first place. That, not seen that all night. Turning back with yellow. That's with Lebedev. He moves him aside into the third bend. Lebedev gets the advantage. Hukum back piling through as well into second. And Dominic Kibera made a great start under pressure here. That moves back through into second in front of Kai Hukum back. But Lebedev there. Lebedevs is now going to add three more points. We'll put him on ten points. It'll be very safe for him. Kibera did an excellent job getting himself out of the start in front, but couldn't hold on to it, holding on to second, but under immense pressure by the German rider right now. They're just trying to find that extra grip to be able to put a challenge on him. Yeah, big stop here for second, third, and fourth. Lebedevs has uh, checked out, but Kibera in second place. Hook him back in third, and Antonio Lindback is coming to a stop here. This could be a disaster. I'll tell you what, Lindback's on nine. He's doing well to get that bike home and not retire, because Kampak could be also important as they come through to finish the race. It's Andres Lebedevs with the advantage and the lead and oh. the win, and Lindback pulls off and oh. will not finish. That could be a crucial error. It's Lebedevs with the win, second place Kibera, third for Hokenbach, and in such a close meeting where Lindback is sat on nine points, that could be a countback, and when, a, wow. when you have a retirement, that could be disaster. Wow. But that's a good one for Lebedevs. He has worked really hard tonight and moves on to ten points. Unbelievable a first corner that was. Very, very difficult conditions. And you wonder the experience that Antonio Lindback has. Would he not know that? We've seen that so often, Sam, when they when it goes to a count back, and if you've had a retirement, that's not as good as a last place. Lebedev's yeah. the winner, Kibera second. That might be good enough for him. Hukenbeck in third gets the one point. No good for, for, for Hukenbeck, obviously, uh, in that one. But um, the one point, nowhere near enough for, for, for Kai Hukenbeck. And then you got to say Antonio is a DNF because he did not finish the race. Uh, Lebedev from the outside gets himself into the corner, negotiates that little bit of wetness, squeezes the bike back under the inside of Dominic Cabrera that made a start. Finally, somebody's made a start off the inside, but I'd say the conditions probably helped because they put a little bit of water down on the track, made things a little bit slipper for the boys when they dumped that clutch, and they all stuck to the inside line right there, but it was uh, Andres Lebedev that had the secret of getting the momentum from that outside gate, tucking it up the inside right here, and got his back wheel right on the right. Look at how close that is to that white line. Well, I think, Almost I think went we are, over we, it. Are we looking at that? They've held the riders for, they've held the, riders for the, uh, the next race. They've not gone on track. Okay. So are we looking at this? Uh, the referee might be thinking that. And they're that. looking on track, actually, Sam. If you look, the, the clerk of the course is down. Is, we're looking at both Ben 2. The clerk of the course is looking also. Oh, boy. Okay, so they're all having a study on whether uh, both wheels went over the white line, which is against the rules in Speedway. One wheel over the white line is fair enough, but if both wheels go over it, that could be deemed that you cut the inside, and, and that is a foul, and you could be excluded. So We're the referee's looking, looking again. Let's yep. look at the rider in yellow here. Cuts it in, tucks it up. Front wheel over the white, back wheel's coming up close to it. If that was a tennis, would he be in or out? Well, I think he's on the line there. Yeah, I don't I, think he's gone over. I don't think so either, looking at it. I think he's on the line. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be over the line. Yeah, clearly over, over the white. And to put, and, and turn four used to be really critical coming out because I've been disqualified from going over both wheels over the line coming up for this track in the past. Did you know you'd done it, or was it? If... No, it just just racing the rider in front of in front of me, and you turn harder, and you just go over it, and the referee's looking right down at turn four and made a decision on me, but I did clearly, obviously, go over what well, they said it did. But it, it's turn two, the referee, of course, cannot see. We're above turn two, yep. and quite clearly someone has radioed to the referee, and they, they were looking at marks on the track down here. You yeah. see the white line? Yeah. It's hard to say. There's a little bit of a darkness going right there, going that direction. Well, he's still looking. Here we go. So, so look, the back wheel here. Did it go over the white line? That means... Oh, it's so close. <laughs> you see the chalk dust coming up, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I'll let the referee make that decision, but it looked like he was on the I line. I think that'll be very, very harsh indeed. Lebedev's is looking at it himself. No, 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 he no, says. No. And this is crucial because Lebedev's, if he, as long as he's won this race, he's got 10 points, and that's going to be a place definitely in the in the last chance at least. He's actually currently second overall if he um, if he holds this victory. Kibera's also got 10, but Lebedev's is in front of him on countback. Well, 
big drum roll right now whether or not the riders are being sent out for the next race but we're watching it again yeah it's so it's okay close. it's okay good so close it's too hard to call i would say that's a relief for Lebedev's. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, bud. So Lebedev wins that race. He's on to 10. Kuber is also on 10, just behind him on countback. Limbach, with that retirement, is on nine. One race win, three second places. So we'll see what happens there. Um, if there is a, a countback required with others. Uh, for example, you've got Kasper Verena sat on seven points with a win, two seconds, and a last. So if Verena was to come second in his last ride, then he would go ahead of Limbach on countback. That's how important it is with that, with that retirement. So we yeah, will see. Just, just, I mean, he had time, didn't he? You have, yeah. Well, you have, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have plenty just, of time just to push walking the around, yeah. Just yeah. Too close to the pit, I guess, to get out of, to get out of, get out of jail there, huh? But we'll see. We'll see if it um, causes him to drop out to the top six. In the meantime, Mikkel Mikkelsen off the inside here in heat 18. Andreas Laaga off gate two. Dimitri Berger gate three. Norik Bazon off the outside. Well, this could be a decent one for Mikkelsen here. We've, we, we mentioned he's got the tough draw with inside gates, but again, it's not the strongest of lineups with all respect here to what we've seen so far. Um, Berger off gate three might be a threat with a fast start. Mikkelsen inside. Looking for points here to make his way into the final. If he was to win this race, that he would uh, be doing so. Lyonga gate two, Berger gate three, Bladorn gate four. That is your lineup here for Heat 18 in what has become, as it so often turns out to be, an eventful meeting here in Gustro. Yeah, Lots of talking points. Remind everybody that Mickelson did win off of gate one, the only one to do it in his previous ride at Heat 16, I believe that was. So he'll be feeling pretty confident that he can have a good run going to the first corner. There. The most points scored is himself sitting on that inside gate. And um, yeah. Big race for Mickelson here. Big race. Mickelson, Layaga, Berger, and Bladorn at the start line for Heat 18. The man on the inside has got nine points for a four rider. Three wins so far. Away they go. Can he nail the start from the inside? Mikkel Mickelson. Yes, he can. Mikkel Mickelson gets to the bend in front. The Dane has the lead on a night when his main rival, Leon Manson, is dropping massive points here in Gustro. Mikkel Mickelson could be taking control of the Speedway Euro Championship. He leads onto his second lap. Big strap for second, third, and fourth. Dimitri Berger held that to second place for now. But it's really time for. Second, third, and fourth, second place, still being held by Bladorn. Lyaga out the back, but Mickelson peering off here. Yeah, he's definitely got this uh, combination set up right now, working for him. Conditions have come his way. You wouldn't have thought so early on because he's finished off with two inside gates, but he's made this count. And chasing him right behind him is uh, Dimitri Bjarg, just getting into that second place right there as they settle down with uh, Norik Bladorn getting, getting into that third position. Well, Mickelson has the one split, they may take it. Perfect from the day, the double champion trying to reclaim the title this season. He makes the final here tonight. A win for Mikkel Mickelson, second place for Dimitri Berger with Bladorn in third place and Laaga out the back. And Mickelson moves on to 12 points, four wins and one last. And that's a place in tonight's final here in Gustrove confirmed for Mikkel Mickelson. Exactly what he wanted out of Heat 18, out of that inside gate. Made it work. Dimitri Berger in second place there. He finishes on five. Norik Bedorn, the wild card, finishes on three. And Andreas Lyaga, he finishes on five. Yeah, Lyaga was the only one that really had a really good chance. If he could have got out of the gate number two and get in there, he could have scored three points, put him on eight. Might have had a slight chance. We don't know that. But uh, Mikkel Mikkelsen definitely knew what he needed to do from that inside gate. He got himself into the first corner. A lot of white powder came up when he turned that bike into that corner. I was wondering if the referee was going to say, are oh, we going to have another investigation? Because he <laughs> turned it so darn tight just to kind of keep that thing for sure going up that inside coming off of turn two as the race has unfolded it mixed up a little bit but it was unfortunate there for the rest of the boys not to get in the mix because uh Mikkel Mikkelsen he knew what he wanted to do didn't he got up front and took off he did. Mikkel Mickelson is in the final. Janos Kowadze is also in tonight's final. He races in Heat 19, but, but uh, with Kowadze on 11 points and his nearest rival, Patrick Dudek, is on eight. And Kowadze already has three race wins compared to Dudek's one. So although they meet in Heat 19, uh, even if Dudek was to win the race and Kowadze at the back, then Kowadze would 
trump that on count back. So Kowadze is in tonight's final, but there's a massive scrap going on for other places in the last chance. And this is crucial in heat 19 with Kowadze off the inside gate on 11. It's so important for him to score points for the series. And then you've got Verena there in blue, who's currently on seven, just outside the top six. Dudek in white on eight, who's just inside the top six. And Ellis in yellow on seven, just outside the top six. Yeah, I tell you what, Casper Verena, just to add to that right now, sitting on 18 points overall in the series right now. Those three points that are available for him right now. But come on, gate number two, nobody's won on it. So it's going to be tall. Adam Ellis is sitting in probably the driving seat in this heat number 19. Coming from the outside gate, sitting on seven points, could add three more points to his total and put him in a position. Come on, stay off the inside then in red. 11 points so far. A big scrap on for other places here. Verena in blue, seven. Dudek in white, eight. Ellis in yellow, seven. How do you call this eight nineteen? Wow. Wow, you got to say it. The favorite's going to have to be Ellis on the outside, but Dudek right there and then in the white helmet color. He's in good form right now. He is the one that's just one point over the other two guys either side of him, but with Kowadze on the inside at 11. Massively competitive heat 19 on the way to try and sort down places in the top six. And Kowadze makes a good one there for the inside. Dudek gives Ellis a shove on turn two. Ellis is sent really wide. Dudek now trying to go around. Kowadze on the top turn. Ellis goes to the inside. She goes through the third place. What a battle out in oh, front nice with Dudek comeback. turning back on Kowadze. Brilliant move by Dudek. Superb move back by Yannis Kowadze. They're trading places as Dudek tries the inside once again. Kawase looking for the outside. Patrick Dudek and Yellow Kawase scrapping it out here. Dudek in front. Tremendous heat number 19. Both these poles are really oh. throwing at each other as the Kawase comes back in there. Sitting on 11 points trying to add three men. Dudek comes back in there. No way. This is epic stuff here in heat 19. And Yellow Kawase now leads Patrick Dudek. It's Verena in third place who's overcome Adam Ellis. They start the last lap. Yellow Kawase on fire tonight in Kustro. The best, I think, of Patrick Dudek is still quite hard in second place. Marina is in third. Adam Ellis is going to be disappointing for him here in heat 19. Just going to fade at a crucial time. But Yelis Kowanzo takes a brilliant victory in heat 19. Up to 14 points on the night. And that was an epic contest there against Patrick Dudek. He changed places. I don't know how many times we'll see it again. Sure, we can find out. Brilliant race. Kowanzo wins it from Patrick Dudek. The third place for... Casper Verena, that will not be enough for him either on eight points overall. So a big chance here for Mikkel Mickelson in the series because Verena will not make the top six on the night. Confirmation of Heat 19, Kawante the winner, Dudek second, Verena third, Ellis at the back. And before Heat number 20, we can confirm that Kawante's in the final with Mickelson, Lebedev, Kubera, Dudek and Limbach will be in the semi. Unfortunately for Adam Ellis, he's now not sitting in the top six, so he loses out. The biggest loser in this heat number 19, but the two poles, respect from both of them, throwing the bike at each other. There goes the first move right there with Quasi going a little bit wide. Dudek cut back underneath him, gets himself out in front, then he goes a little bit wide, has to move out of the way again because there's Kowazi again, and it just keeps going, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, we didn't know who was going to come out on top, but uh, fair play, Dudek kept on going, uh, kept on trying, but Kowazi at the moment appears to have all the answers around this track. He sure does. He finished last year winning this uh, event here and, and did it in style, um, and now he's out there under pressure right there. Dudek did a really good job coming from that gate number three, but you got to give it to Kowaze coming out of that inside gate actually was in front from the from the start getting himself into that corner job done job done by Giannis Kowaze 14 points from five rides in the qualifiers into the final and making big inroads in the race for top five overall in the Speedway Euro Championship Mikkel Mickelson in the final on 12 and a big big night for Mikkel Mickelson who's going to have a very healthy serious lead at the end of tonight whatever happens in the final because his nearest rivals, he's currently eight points in front of Madsen and Verena, neither of whom are going any further in this meeting. Madsen could score points in hit 20, but this is a huge night for Mikkel Mickelson in the title race. No question about that. Hit 20, Janke back inside, Madsen gate two, minute gate three, Zengotta off the outside. Yeah, this is exactly where... Uh... Mikael Mickelson wanted to be. You know, he's frustrated this year in a lot of ways. He knew he blew it at Chestakova when he opened up the door there and gave Madsen that chance to get in there. But now he's got a chance. So Leon Madsen's now sitting on three points. Devastated night for him and coming into this heat 20. Well, Leon Madsen's going to have to come back big time in big gosh and part of this to try and reel back in Mikael Mickelson. 
and uh, that will be one to watch out for definitely in the last two rounds but this uh, could well prove to be a decisive night in the series not the way we were expecting it to Heat number 20 at the start line, these riders can't go through, but they can obviously still score points to the series total overall. Watch out for Manton in blue, needs some points desperately. And again, after Knight has gone for Leon Manton, he's not made the start. Pringles then got to have the advantage. Second place, the Amateur Bank. It's Millick in third with Manson at the back now going for the outside run. So got to still race leads with Quebec going around the outside in second place. Millick in third. I'm sure if Mikkel Nicholson's watching this race in the pits, he'll be delighted to see Leon Manson no scoring. Unbelievable. Just can't even write about this one right here. The result that uh, Leon Manson's having, but out in front, Knights of Season got to took care of that. I mean, he's going to, he's only scored four points so far, and he's going to be sitting on seven with this finish. Not enough, but it's good for him. But here we go. We got Leon Manson getting some run on the outside now. Can he pull it off? Been done by Jan Quebec off the fourth bend and Manson being frustrated all the way here goes down the inside of Quebec. Now he's going to try and get into up to Manson. But it's like Jan Quebec comes again. It just will not go right for Leon Manson here in Kirstra tonight. And he's battling away for just a single point here in 820. Pringles and Gosson with the win. Second place, Millick. Manson does get a point for third. But that about sums up his night. I think Leon Manson will want to pack his stuff up very, very quickly and go home <laughs> and forget all about Gusto oh. 2023. Because if it could go wrong, it has. But well done, Greg Olsen got a, a win there in 820, finishing off with victory for uh, seven points overall. And uh, that's the outcome of 820. Minnick in second place, uh, Minnick finishing on five. And Leon Manson in third place, finishing on four points with Jan Quebec out the back, and he finished on three. Unbelievable. Well, what can we say? I mean, only only Leon Matson would know what's going wrong underneath him right now, but nothing's helping him whatsoever. But Gregory Zingata gets a really good start from that outside, gets out in front, pretty much dominates it from that point on. Blackback Millet gets in there and throwing it around. Yankiev is in there as well, but uh, it's it's just a matter of, you know, when is Matson's luck going to change for him? He's riding hard, but the bike just is not pulling him forward. We've seen this guy pull off some of the biggest moves on the slickest tracks, the hardest gates, and come out in front, but nothing's working for him this evening. But uh, Gregory Zingata isn't going to be complaining right now. He just went out there and added three more points to his tally, which puts him in seventh place. And he's only just missed out in the top six. Him and Ellis, there's actually four guys sitting on seven points, so just one point made a difference, didn't it? Dave? We've, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's been it's been so close all the way, and uh, Manson's just got beaten up everywhere in this race, and <laughs> even then with with Jan Quebec, and um, yeah, that, that's the way it's uh, that's the way it's turned out. We have never seen, well, for years and years, Leon Manson have a night like this in the Speedway Euro Championship. It just shows it can happen to the very very best. There's the confirmation. Then Kowalski and Mickelson go to the final, 14 and 12 points respectively. Lebe Lebedev's in third place on 10, uh, Kibera also on 10, Dudek on 10, Limbach on 9, and then you see Verena just missing out there on 8, that final ride there, the third place, not enough. Ellis, Zengota and Huckenbeck all finishing on 7, again, just outside that, uh, that top 6. Madsen on 4, and that's all he'll take from the meeting. So overall, Mikkel Mickelson is on 27 points with one ride to come. Leon Madsen with 20, he's finished for the night. Verena is on 19, Dudek is on 18, we'll see him again in the semi-final very shortly. And uh, Lebedev's also on 18 in the series, still with a ride to come. So we've been trawling back through the archives tonight, some of the classic Gustro finals, and we saw a belter here in 2022. This was last year's final in Gustro and enjoy the race and enjoy the Yanis Kiwadze in white. But this was quite simply a race where all four were in contention. Kiwadze made the start, but the action here was just beginning. And it was Leon Manton trying the outside run. You've got Dudek also involved uh, in the race too. And uh, everyone having a go. Dan Beauty also in red. Yeah, this is an exciting race there. I mean, Kawase really worked hard to get in here. I think he only did he have one last place or yeah. something, and then the rest of them were wins. And yes. the final, this is the final race right here for him to win that. And it was a stacked final as it was. And he went out there and very deservedly uh, controlled the night and did well to finish it off really good for a race win in the final. But you'll see as the race goes on, actually how the, the riders behind are in such a furious battle, they actually end up catching up with Kawase on the last lap because Dudek at this point is sort of trying to fend off Dan Bueller and then it almost gets into Kowalski there. <laughs> yeah, that's the excitement of the Goose Road track, man. They just pile him up right there because the rider in front isn't comfortable, doesn't know if it's the inside or the outside. He's got to be if you're in the middle of the track, you're in no man's land. But in the right man's land was Yannis Kowalski, just an all four, flashing over the finishing line pretty much together. 
here in 2022. Brilliant stuff. And uh, Kawadze taking the victory. He's still got a chance of going back to back and becoming our first double winner here in Groustro. A couple of races to go. Let's head down to the pits, get some reaction with Thomas. Thank you, Dave. The only Frenchman in the field, Dimitri Berger. Remember, on June 17, he was so fast in Chesterhover. That was a really good race from your side, Dimitri, in Chesterhover. Finished in fifth on the, on, on the really good shape. Yeah, it was a good one, uh, for sure. Uh, completely different than today, but yeah, it's enough. It's life. Yeah, it's in the past, or so I must move on. We know Dimitri German Speedway was very famous for producing long track champions. You've been long track champion five years ago. Uh, did it help you in to boost your career? Uh, I don't know really, but it's always uh, good to, to to win a gold medal in the long track. That was uh, the goal for many years before, and uh, but yeah, now I'm quit from from the championship. So uh, yeah. different dimension, yeah. Yeah, and I'm focused on speedway and yeah, hopefully uh, do something good. David Belagon, Sebastien Trésorier, you have Philippe Berger, your father. So many good things happen to French speedway. You get league in France. So you happy with the way the French speedway is evolving? Yeah, it's good. You know, every year it's getting better and better. So um, yeah, that is good, good thing for, for the French uh, speedway. But it's tough yeah, in France. Speedway is not popular, so it's... Not like motocross, of course. Yeah, true, but uh, yeah, they, they do the best to, to grow up every year, so that is the main, main thing. Thank you very much. Nice. Thank you very much indeed for that one, and uh, Dimitri Berger will look to uh, come back in, uh, in Big Gosh in round three. Mikkel Mikkelsen is still the fastest man here tonight. Don't think that will change now as the, uh, the meeting goes on. The final track prep taking place ahead of the, the last chance uh, semi-final race, which will feature Lebedev, Skibera, Dudek and uh, Limbach. Let's hope that Limbach has managed to sort the bike out after his uh, failure last time out. But uh, Mikkel Mikkelsen, 58.500, the fastest man throughout the meeting here. in Gustrov just ahead of Adamoas, who started the meeting really well with two wins. And uh, top distance there. That's, the, that, that's what they've been going all over the track tonight. And uh, Andrei Leonard Lebedev has been uh, just in front of Dominic Kibera in that respect. So uh, that's an interesting one. We don't see that one very often. But it's amazing what you can uh, what you can pick up now with transponders. Yeah, just uh, he probably reached out farther than anybody to be able to see. It. Yeah, <laughs> He's been the yeah. First. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, all interesting stuff there. And uh, the gates, which is uh, pretty important too. We have now seen three winners from the inside, and sometimes you've managed to make the start from the inside. It's uh, not been easy. Gate two, as we mentioned, has been the graveyard. You look at the points distribution. Uh, gate two has only picked up 14 points so far, and the next lowest is gate one with 30. So I wouldn't mind betting that when these picks are made shortly for the uh, final couple of races, uh, gate number two is quite simply the one they are not going to want to have. It'll be the last one. Here we go. So let's find out what happens. Let's see who goes where in the last chance semi final. Lebedev goes to go off gate three in white. Dominic Kibera is next. Gotta be red or yellow. Surely it's surely yellow. He does. Dominic Kibera goes for the outside yellow, and that means that uh, Patrick Tudor goes red, and Antonio Limbach is left with uh, with gate two, and he'll have to think of something different to do here. I think in this next race, gate two has just not uh, just not worked out at all here this evening. So a reminder: this this next race is all about simply. Top two going through to the final. There's no points on offer here for the series because, of course, uh, we've already got two automatic qualifiers for the final in uh, Janusz Kowadze and uh, Mikkel Mikkelsen. Um, and like I say, Sam, this is a not a, deci a decisive night. We could never say that because we've seen some, some brilliant comebacks in the past. But Mikkel Mikkelsen knows that whatever happens in tonight's grand final, he is taking a very healthy series lead with him to Big Gosh, and he surely wasn't expecting that. I don't think he was expecting that at all. I thought I didn't think it would come so easy. And, and, and him to finish off with two red gates at the end and to make the best of those gates, I mean, that's a big bonus. And that, that right there is the distance of uh, that's six points, isn't it? Right yeah, there alone. Yeah. That right there is. Especially when Madsen's just yeah. scrapping away for one point here and there. Yeah, so six points. You take those six points off, you've had failure in those. He's 21 points. Yeah. We're only one point difference, right? So. Yeah. Fair play to the guy to go out there and uh, actually make something out of what a lot of people haven't been able to do. Absolutely. Here's uh, 
As is Lebedev, and it's good to see him back also in uh, in, in form. He's, he's done okay this year with with, with Krojno in a, a tough season for them in the in the actual Liga. But uh, Lebedev's the rider we've enjoyed watching over the years, and of course was was champion in 2017. So uh, he has a chance here to to make it into a final, really uh, shake things up, which would be uh, be really good for him. Um, interesting race to come, of course, against uh, Dudek and uh, Antonio Limbach and, and Dominic Kibera has worked his way through after a, a slow start to the meeting as well. But, uh, yep, yeah, Andres, Andres Lebedev, we've not seen him in a final since Lublin 2017 when he won the series. So uh, this would be uh, a real step forward for him. Patrick Dudek there, watching the, uh, the final part of track prep. The tractors are being brought in. They didn't put any water down, but they the water the truck trucks, out. Yeah, yeah. The, track, the truck's been out there packing the dirt in, so it will be. Um, it will take a race or two. Um, well, there's only got two races, two races here. To go, yeah. A couple of racing lines, a couple of laps to be able to get, produce some dirt to give these guys an option to be able to move offline. I would su suspect that's the way it's going to be. The inside's going to be the way to go. And uh, with Dudek coming from that very inside, yeah, he didn't make a bad start in his last one on the inside, so. He's got to be thinking, you know, even though he was uh, not the first choice there, he's he's not in a bad position. No, indeed, and important for Patrick Dudek, who's currently on 18 points in the standings, to put himself in the final. Um, obviously, he can't make uh, points on Mickelson in this race, but he, he needs to put himself in the final just to, um, hopefully, from his point of view, catch up overall in the final. But of course, Mickelson and, and Kawadze, first and foremost, will have a uh, gate choice in that race. So uh, that will be... Uh, tough ask and you, you don't want to well you obviously you want to come first or second in this race to get through to the final but you know if you do come second you're going to be uh, left with uh, gate two in the final almost certainly the graveyard we call that now yeah. no, it's labeled because we've always said at Gusto there's always one isn't it it's always one and, it, and a lot of times it is gate, gate, two. Gate, gate two or gate three quite often yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and gate three's not been too bad for these guys it's worked out for them so yeah, it's one of those things. It's luck of the draw, I guess, when it comes out to where you, where you place um, each one of these riders get five races to get to this position right now, and they will have one gate twice, and they would have competed in every gate once yep. to get themselves here, and we've witnessed that today um, as, the, as the night's closing in now on this crowd, the German crowd that's been here, and it's been pretty fabulous for them. They don't got any German riders in the top form, do they? So no, I, think, I mean, Huckenbeck's missed out, hasn't he? And, yeah. and I think Huckenbeck has ridden pretty well. He did. But uh, had that, that crash, unfortunately, and then a couple of times, wrong place, wrong time. And, um, yeah, he, sorry, competitive, but didn't quite work out for him. No, but uh, still an enjoyable evening here. This is some exciting racing going oh, yeah. on in the context of the overall. We didn't really know what was going to happen with four guys missing when we were at Chestakova, mm. whether those guys, the top two, which was... Uh, Leon Madsen, which won that one, and uh, Mikel, Mikel getting, getting in there for that second place. And, uh, well, he's the one that's the big winner overall so far. And uh, two more rounds to go. And I don't think uh, Mikel's really going to fail on these two next tracks. He's got plenty of speed with his bike. He's just got to see who comes to the party next and um, starts putting more challenges on him. Indeed, um, he's certainly their, their tracks he'll be familiar with and he'll know how to get around and it really will be a case of holding his nerve and we've, we've seen he can do that, done it before, he's been a double champion so uh, it, he's certainly going to be the favourite but uh, we, we've seen before in this series people have apparently had good leads and it's all been whittled away so uh, he's certainly not all over but uh, imagine if Mickelson won the final here tonight, the, what, a, what a lead he'd have there. Yeah, that's it, that would just be the icing on the cake as they say. He would love that to happen, and he's going strong enough to do it, but uh, there's a couple other really handy guys in it as well. And we'll soon see who will be making it out of this first semifinal. Or the last chance, we call it the last chance. Last, last chance, it's, there's only one last chance. chance. It's it's last so chance, yeah. yeah. So it's <laughs> basically it. Yes, so anyway, uh, Patrick Dudek off the inside gate then, Antonio Limbach off gate two. There is Antonio's Lebedevs in white, and Dominic Kibera off the outside gate. We need two here for the final. The points don't count towards the series. It's simply a case of qualifying for the final, and uh, the top two will do so. And uh, there is Antonio Limbach, who... Uh, looks like it's the same bike as the uh, the one which expired in his uh, previous ride. Didn't cost him a semi-final place, but he has ended up with uh, with gate two, so that will not be an easy run to the first bend or first turn for him. See if he still gets himself into the equation. Dudek, Limbach, Lebedevs and Kubera. Where do you see it? Uh, well, you would got to say 
the conditions are playing their part once again here, but I would say Lebedev looks like probably the strongest in this uh, race. Obviously, he's chose to come out of gate number three. Um, probably not a bad shout. Okay, we'll see what he does. Kibera outside him. Dudek off the inside. Do you think Dudek's bid will be to just try and pin it really tight, try and make it and, and hold it there, or is he going to try and move people out? I think Dudek's probably... He's such a... such a, um, How can I put it? Um, a calculated rider. He doesn't take big chances. Yeah, 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 he, yeah. he just... He'll go out of that inside start, try to get in there and just get that second place is what I think his mission is going to be. If he can get alongside of him, he won't do nothing silly because we've seen him earlier on. He doesn't reach for the dirt even though he's on the inside when he possibly should. Two for the final. Dudek, Limbach, Lebedev and Kibera in good strip. Away they go. And it's uh, off the outside gate. Lebedev in white makes it. Out does Kibera in yellow and Dudek in the inside to be fair. Antonio Limbach very much in the equation from gate two but can't quite get through on the top turn. It's Lebedev who leads from Kibera with Limbach in third and Patrick Dudek here at the back. It's more good news for Mikael Nicholson but Patrick Dudek not going to win the final after he's done. Lebedev has the lead. Unbelievable. This is really shaking things up here and I can tell you no, oh, a little bit of carnage there almost. Oh, the Lebedev's almost let that thing go right there but really good position for him to be out in front right there. He's got to hold on to that now. Kibera hold on to that second but he's getting pressured. He's getting pressured by two riders behind him. Antonio Limbach and Patrick Dudek still trying to make a move as they start the last lap. It's still outside Lebedev's out in front of Dominic Kibera with Limbach in first, Dudek in the back. Not going to happen here for Patrick Dudek. It looks like it will happen for Dominic Kibera in second place. And for the former champion, Antonio Lebedev, who's back in the final in the Speedway Euro Championship. Lebedev makes the final for the first time in nearly six years. Last time was Lublin 2017, and he makes it here in Gustrov. And well done to Lebedev for that. It's second place for Dominic Kibera. It's third for Antonio Limbach and Patrick Dudek goes out and it gets better and better for Mikkel Mickelson. Wow. Okay. Enough of that. Let's see what if we can actually wrap this up. Dudek's still going around giving everybody a wave there saying, all right, he did his best he could do. Didn't quite get there. The inside gate's very difficult. The crowns are giving him a, a hooray there, but it's all about Lebedev's. Andreas Lebedev makes it from gate number three with Dominic Cabrera following him through, coming from that outside gate. A really good uh, um, race for the, the young pole there from the outside there to be able to squeeze on that outside gate, cut back into the inside right there of Lebedev's right there to take care of Antonio Limbach, which put in a really good fight to get himself into contention going into turns three, but the door was shut straight away on him with Cabrera finding that position to get in there, and he just kept uh, Lebedev honest. That made a great start off gate uh, number three to get himself up front, led from the front right there, and you can see how he's just defending that inside line. Whoa, that little bit of slop right there, which was kind of thinking that could have went either way, but he held on to that one. He did well to hold on to it. Absolutely, he did. And uh, Dominic Cabrera chasing him home in second place. He had to hold up a bit of pressure later on, but that's what it means to Anzales Lebedev's had some tough times in recent years, but has kept on battling away and now makes it into the final here in Gustro and uh, one more big ride to come up against Yanis Kawante, Mikkel Mikkelsen and also Dominic Kibera who's made it through, but to underline what that means in the series, we've got Mikkelsen sat on 27 points, Madsen's on 20, not in the final, Marina on 19, not in the final, Dudek on 18, not in the final, Final. <laughs> Lebedev's coming on 18, so he he actually stands to gain even more here in the final. But it's looking so strong for Mikkel Mickelson even before the final. Oh, absolutely. So everything's kind of fell his way, hasn't it? Really, it's not because he's not been performing. It's he's actually done a tremendous job here. And um, like I've already mentioned once, and I'll probably mention it a couple more times, he actually made that inside gate, which nobody has. There's three, there's three gate winners, three winners off of the inside, and two of them are from him. Almost Kowalski, which shows you the uh, the class of those two. Yeah. That have done it from pretty much every every place. Yeah, so it just goes to show the caliper. You know, the, this track is very difficult for the best of times, but it's a leveler, isn't it? This track's oh, yeah. always been a leveler. You bring all the top guys here, and nobody can dominate. And they don't race here during the year, do they? They, they no. come here once a year, so they, the, the ones that have been in this series for a few years, they know pretty much what to expect. They've been here, but it's never quite the same. And uh, we've seen it tonight with races that you just cannot read, cannot predict, and, um, yeah, and enjoyable they, racing. And they do talk about it, the riders do, the setups. You know, yep. it's really difficult because um, we heard... Um, 
you know, that, that Kawaze is running an engine that's quite set up for the bigger tracks. Uh, and then you kind of think, Segelsi said that, you know, he's 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 involved with this tuning a bit, and he thinks, um, you know, he doesn't understand that he likes his track, but he's using a track, uh, an engine that's kind of set up for the bigger tracks, and that's really kind of unusual. This is, it's not a, it's not a big, grippy track. It's kind of a fast, slick track. It's a fast, small track, and, and, and we've, we've talked about this before. Riders who ride small tracks like big tracks, and it, it looks very spectacular. It's got to be. It's got to be some. They must be able to slow the bike down, the engine performance down a bit, to be able to get a strong engine to actually slow down a bit. Let's head to get the picks with Kawase taking the outside gate. Kawase goes for gate four. Mickelson goes for gate three. <laughs> Lebanevs goes for the inside, and that leaves uh, Dominic Kibera off gate two. They look happy, don't they? They look focused, Sam. <laughs> yeah. They look focused. It's, yeah. game, it's game time. It's, <laughs> it's serious time. It's big time. And, um, yeah, it's something different for Lebedev, as I've mentioned, compared to the last few years, which is great to see. Um, Dominic Kubera, who's has been strong in this series since coming into it, saw him make uh, finals last year in Wuch and in Pardubis. Uh, Kibera finished second in Wuch, in fact, so he's uh, suddenly got himself uh, very much involved in this series. Missed the first round due to injury. Mikkel Mickelson, the winner in part of its last season, has been uh, such a strong force since he first took the title in 2019, won it in 21 as well. And Kawadze, Kawadze could break that stat that we've never had a double winner in Gustrov. There he is, yellow helmet colour. Focused. Let me make it from the outside. Stern, huh? Stern, Stern. focus. Yeah. Making sure that they're not going to make any mistakes. They're right at the at the point where they're going to go out there and have to finish things off for the evening. Uh, the sun's gone down. The crowd's here. It's crisp outside. The weather's changed a bit. They would they would have had to watch their weather stations, which most of the guys these days do have one in their pits, so they can see what the pressures are, what the density is in the air, and how it affects uh, their engines and, and their setups, and they got to chase that when they start in the sunlight, as they did earlier, and then it cools down like this. They got to be on top of their game, and they really rely on their team to help them make these decisions. And now it comes down to the end, and now the result will stand once they finish these four laps in this final. Yep, they're about to make their way onto the circuit. All the uh, the fans here are trying to light up the arena with their uh, with their phones and what have you. So there's, there's night falls here. Uh, you'll probably see that as the as the riders make their way onto the circuit. It's uh, been a good atmosphere here all evening. We've had all sorts of uh, action and, uh, and drama and a couple of refereeing calls and uh, one more to go. And it's certainly a significant night overall in the Speedway Euro Championship. Lebedevs having a word here with Dudek. And I wonder what the, the conversation there between those two and uh, Dudek maybe telling Lebedev what not to do from the inside. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> what, what didn't work for him. So, uh, see, I, I'm sure that's what they were doing too. He says, I did this, I did that, you got to do this, or whatever. But, uh, you know, that's a it's a hard one to come from that inside. You need to get in there. What what the best thing could happen for you is uh, the two guys in the outside cling up with each other, get yep. in the first corner, and you just got to be aware of that might happen and be ready for it. Yeah, I mean, we saw the clip earlier of uh, Vianas Kawanzai using the inside to good effect in the final last year, but this year could be a very different race, especially as he's coming from the outside gate. Will he be trying to hold the outside, or will he be trying to make it there and then cut himself right across the field on yeah. that first turn? Yeah, well, I mean, only they will know that right now. As soon as they, they'll work it out foot by foot on the racetrack, meaning when they dump the clutch, if they get a good, good drive, they could focus on getting to the corner and then trying to dominate it if you can, dude. Clamp them down hold the line and then let it release from there but the way it's been going is you got to get to turns three and you got to hold that inside just to be controlled and then from there you can start picking your lines well there is dominic kibera the man with the the toughest task really in the blue helmet color the outsider just based on game position there is Mikkel mickelson a man who stands the game massively in the series and already done so here tonight could go even further in this final. Lebedev off the inside gate. Kibera off gate two. Mickelson off gate three. The warning is there, don't forget, so he can't move at the start. And Kawadze off the outside for this grand final here in Gustro. Here we go. Rev up, boys. It's going to happen. Mickelson's going to be able to extend his lead if he's able to win this 
one and just sit back and watch the next couple of rounds come into. He won't be sitting back, will he? He won't be sitting back, but he might be sitting pretty, um, if, depending on what the scores are after this final. He's got 27 points already, and he could extend his lead. Currently, seven points in front. Only Lebedev, who's on 18, really anywhere near him at this stage. Yeah, all the lights are in the fans. The fans have all their phone lights on right now. It's looking pretty awesome. Good atmosphere here. As they start counting down here for what have we got? We got 13 seconds uh, on the clock right now, so the boys are getting ready. The grand final in Gustrov. Spectacular night of racing as we always tend to get here. And it's Lebedev's, Kubera, Mikkelsen, and Kawadze at the start line. Here we go for the grand final in Gustrov. Green lights on, and away they go. And the flying start is by Kawadze from gate four. Kawadze gets in from Mikkelsen, trying the inside one off then to Mikkel Mikkelsen, trying to push out Yellows Kawadze. Neck and neck into the third bed. Stays on the outside, tries to get round Mickelson off that fourth turn. He does so. Kawante hits the front. Second place, Mickelson. Third is Anton Lebedev. But Yellow's Kawante took the outside gate. Stuck the way there with Nico Mickelson. And Kawante out in front here. Yeah, Kawante just stuck to his ground, just worked the bike every inch, mid track. Now he's moving outside. Mickelson did everything he possibly could do, but Kawante's got this. I think Mickelson now will be happy enough with second place and the, the good job that will do in the series for him. Papillon for third with Lebedev holding Kibera at bay. There's one lap to go and the Yellow Skawante who missed the first round due to injury is bouncing back in fantastic fashion here. Off the back straight for the final time. Nobody has ever won two Speedway Euro Championship rounds in Gustro. That will change because Kawante goes back to back. Kawante wins in Gustro. Second place, Mikkel Mickelson. Third, Antes Lebedev. And Yellow Skawante does this in 2023, just as in 2022. Finally, we have a rider who's won twice in Gustro. And I, I couldn't be more happier for him because he's so quiet, but yet so focused. And uh, sometimes, you know, I worked with him way back in 2006 at Reading Speedway. And I'm just so happy. Well, how old is he now? Nearly 40. Yeah, there you go. So he's out there winning championship races like this. And as he's doing a nice willy down the back straightaway for the or the front straightaway for the crowd. And very good. I would say that uh, Miguel Mickelson has got to be pretty happy as well. He acknowledged the fact that, hey, you know, second place ain't oh, yeah. so bad. And this massive result for Nicholson, who's nine points in front in the series. He could not have possibly expected that heading to Gustrop. And the 39-year-old Yellow Scamonze is the winner. And there's your series leader, Mikkel Mickelson. And there's your meeting winner. Two on the shot at this venue, Yellow Scamonze. Unbelievable. This is a great night and a good result. Earned it. The, the biggest thing now is, you know, Mikkel Mickelson's now got to hold on to that. He's got to be feeling pretty comfortable right there. Things just went his way, and that's what happens sometimes. But the result is Yanis Kowadze, Mikkel Mickelson, Andres Lebedev, and Dominic Cabrera. Hey, well done, Sam. Good stuff. Thank you very much. <laughs> well done. So, celebrations are taking place down by the uh, pits gate. Uh, both Kowadze and Mickelson are delighted. Here's the winning move. Wow, the start was so important in this uh, final right there. Kowadze got there, didn't know how far to go. Did he have to cut it back? Look at Mickelson now. One chance. Get underneath him, get into turn three. Who gets there first could probably work this race out and probably clinch it at that point right here. The back of the boys going into the first corner. Mickelson's front wheel over the white line, trying to get as much drive as he possibly can do. He needs more speed. Can't get the traction right there. Kawazi now throws it, lets it go, picks up a little bit of drive right there, points the bike again, and then starts pulling away at that point. You can just see the English in the body of these guys both reaching for as much as they possibly can get. And it was Kawaze that got the little bit of a break right there. Twist the throttle one more time, got the grip. Oh. Look at him hit the fence, shot himself in. That's become a bit of a tradition now. You got to kind of get that grip to get in that corner. And that gives you half a bike length, which is enough in a lot of cases. Unbelievable yeah. oh, ride. Yeah. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. Giannis Kawaze over Mikkel Mickelson. There's the wheelie to uh, celebrate and uh, well 17 points is a heck of an effort from Kawansai there you go <laughs> with the with the pit crew 17 points is sensational on this track in this competition that is a great effort and from missing the first round due to injury uh Yanis Kawansai has uh, moved himself up to 
sixth place overall in the standings in the space of one night. Mikkel Mikkelsen, 29 points. Leon Madsen, 20. Kasper Ruina, 19. Andres Lebedev, 19. Patrick Dudek, 18. Janusz Kowadze, 17 in the standings. There's tonight's result then. Janusz Kowadze, 17 big points in the Speedway Euro Championship. And Mikkel Mikkelsen, 14. And the crucial thing there is you compare that to the four that Leon Madsen has scored. Madsen came here with a one-point lead over Mikkelsen. Wow. Turn round 10 the other way tonight. Everything happens in a few hours, right? Oh, yeah. It goes bad and it gets worse and you just can't catch up again. And Leon Madsen will be walking away from this thing, licking his wounds, thinking, how the heck did this go wrong? And he'll know when he talks to his camp, something, something drastically has gone wrong in his setups or whatever's going on or he just wasn't in the mood one or the other but uh, I don't see it that being quite there. often we, he, he, it's not unusual for him to have one bad ride to start off with but he no, normally turns it around and then goes win 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 so the winner was uh, Yanis Kawadze that's some of the action again look at that from yeah, Yanis that's just proving a point when you're out in front you can actually put the bike where you wanted to do he just made sure he kissed that little bit of berm and the lined up against the top of the fence right there, which shoots the bike in there and celebrates with the big Willie showing off to the crowds here in Germany that, uh, you know, well deserved back to back wins for Janusz Kowadze from Poland. Yeah, brilliant stuff. And the, the second direction they see, uh, Greg Olsen got to there as well, congratulating him. And uh, yeah, delight for the, the meeting winner and certainly delight, I think you'll see, for all three on the podium here. There they are. The fact that uh, Kowalski has won the meeting, the fact that Mickelson's got such a strong series position, and the fact that Lebedev is back in business on the roster in the, in the first frame. Yeah, very good stories there from all three of these guys. They won't, they won't, it won't be such a, a long drive going anywhere they're going from tonight. And, and all well, the Polish... they've got the day off tomorrow because all the Polish races are off. So. They're all rained off, yeah. So, I'll be dang, yeah. Yeah, I think the weather is about to take a turn for the worst, but it's been really good here in, uh, in Gustrov this evening and today. And, uh, yep, there's uh, Mikkel Mikkelsen just explaining what went on there. Yeah, I tell you what, he almost got he almost got himself in front, didn't he? He was working that gate number three to get himself in there. And uh, fair play to these guys. Well, here's what they're uh, fighting for in the Speedway Euro Championship. It's a 10-year anniversary year at the Tower on Speedway Euro Championship. We've seen Leon Madsen win it twice. We've seen Mikkel Mickelson win it twice. It will certainly mean a lot to either to become our first three-time overall winner of the series. Leon Madsen was certainly the favourite, but Mikkel Mickelson has turned a massive move in his favour here this evening. But here on, here comes the uh, top three and first of all in third place on the rostrum. And it is great to see this guy back on the podium and has ridden with so much vigour and enthusiasm all night. Picked himself up from a crash too. Lebedev's in third place. And plus, on top of that, he's a super nice guy. Yeah. Super yeah. nice guy to talk to and have a chat with. And uh, really good to see him up up there standing on the podium again. So Lebedev's on the rostrum. We mentioned his uh, big title year of uh, 2017 when he kept finishing on the podium. That was how he uh, got the job done in what was a, a real close fought series, which went as, as ever right down towards the, the closing stages. But he gets his uh, third place awards here this evening. Uh, looking to kick on because that puts him, as I said, in joint third overall in the standings. So a good situation heading to Big Gosh. Second place overall. You always want to win the meeting, but Mikkel Mikkelsen will feel like a winner here tonight because he's put 14 points on the total and seen some of his main rivals trip up and seen his biggest rival trip up massively. Second place for Mikkel this evening. I think, to be fair, I think this second place will feel a lot better than the second place in Chesterhover. Oh, absolutely, yes. Same result, but yeah. very different circumstances. Yeah. He's actually smiling, yeah. 
That's good too, because he felt a little bit down on himself, yep. I think, that when we went and spoke to him after the Chestakova. But uh, it's good to see him uh, with the big smile on his face oh, right now. That yes. means a lot, I'm sure, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, he knows the Speedway Euro Championship is in his hands at the halfway stage. A nine-point lead is a big one to defend. But we missed this man big time in Chestakova because he certainly would be a serious contender if he did all four rounds. As it is, he's again trying to do it from three. But uh, Carlos Camonte is uh, on the top of the podium here tonight. He likes to give everybody a fair chance, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, a rider who's uh, got uh, a real rich history in the sport, and as we mentioned, at the age of 39, is, ha is in actually some of the best form of his career in, in what you would say the twilight years. If he'd won this competition last year, he just missed out, of course, he would be back in the Grand Prix. But um, I'm sure that's still a, an overall aim. But tonight, Janos Kowadze is top of the pile in Gustrov once again. You put in the hard work. Sigelski mentioned that he's quite involved with his engineering side of things, but a little bit more as we hear the anthem. top of the rostrum in round two of the Speedway Euro Championship. Polish national anthem has been well played in the last uh, couple of weeks, of course, with them um, winning the World Cup as well. Last weekend in Roslav, what a finish that was to that tournament. But uh, Janusz Kowadze was involved in that meeting very briefly, somewhat, well, harshly brought into heat 17 as reserve, uh, which did raise a few eyebrows. And in the end, they won it in heat 18 to 20. But... Uh, Tonight, he's the winner, and here is the leader's race jacket being given to Mikkel Mickelson. And Mikkel Mickelson will be very pleased with not only the race jacket itself, but the number of points he's got in the bag. Yeah, he would have never thought this is how it was going to be finishing off coming to this round two of the Speedway European Championship, only trailing by one point, missing out when he was leading the final in Chestakova. But uh, to sit back and look at it now, it's going to be quite easy for him to be focused on a relaxed hopefully next two rounds of this Speedway European Championship. He'll still have to go out there and race oh, yeah. for it, um, but uh, it's uh, it's definitely opened it up for him, hasn't it? It's definitely advantage very firmly in Mikko Mikkelsen's favor, but it's uh, Janusz Kowadze with the biggest champagne celebration on the night yeah. here as the meeting went up. Nobody's wearing goggles, so they're getting that so, straight in the eyes. That, I take, take it that, that stings. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, good on him, and it's good to see, ladies. He's already mentioned Lebedev's back on the podium, and the guy's a class rider, and uh, it's good to see. Absolutely, yeah. There's the top three here of a thoroughly entertaining and eventful meeting. We've again seen we saw four great meetings last season, and uh, Chester Hobo was excellent. So is this one tonight. It really does throw up uh, good action, and the uh, the top three selfie on the podium being taken by Mikkel Mickelson. Another good uh, celebration here. That stage that was uh, One Sports put on here. They've worked hard. Every time we've been to these places, it's always electric. And once again, they didn't let us down. The photographers are there to take a bunch of photographs, lots of glitter all over the place. And uh, the weather was on our side. It certainly was. You never quite know here, but it was this year. We have about a month to go until the, the next round, which is in Big Gosh in, in September, uh, on the 9th of September. And then part of this comes up very quickly after that, uh, a couple of weeks after that on the Friday. So it's uh, yeah, two quick fly rounds in September to complete the series, but Mikkel Mickelson will go into those 
ground feeling very, very confident indeed with this situation. And here is exactly why. Mikkel Nicholson, 29 points. The gap he has is absolutely outstanding. The scrap is on for, at the moment, for second place. But the question will be, who can, can Leon Madsen start to recover in Big Rush? He'll need to go win-win all the way. Lebedev's doing superbly well as well this year, which is, which is great for him. And uh, Barina in play. He's strong. But somebody, someone needs to put a challenge on Mikkel We were Nicholson. saying that before we came here. Who's going to catch him? You know what I mean? Yeah, as far yeah, as yeah. the top two. But it's turned around. But Mickelson's the, the one that's shining at the end. And another incredible night of Speedway. Absolutely fantastic. From Mikkel Mickelson for uh, establishing that big lead in the series. And for Jan Kowadze winning this meeting. It's been, it's been really entertaining. And so many stories to, to tell from the night. And so we've had crashes. We've had a bit of controversy. Um, we've had bike damage. We've had all, all Source, everything that could happen in the meeting. Investigations. Investigations. <laughs> <laughs> Stewards' inquiries. So, yeah, fantastic night, and we just look forward to Big Gosh, don't we now? Can't wait, buddy. Another good job. So, many thanks to all of you for joining us here. We hope you've enjoyed the action here in uh, Gustro. We head to Big Gosh in a month's time. Yanis Kawadze is back as a uh, meeting winner, back to back here in Gustro. Mikkel Mickelson with that superb series lead, taking into round three. Fantastic night here in Gustro. The winner, back to back in Gustro, Yanis Kawadze from meeting. Dave Rowe and Sam Malenko, thanks for watching us. It's a very good night. Good evening. Thank you.